on record. I'd like to call to order the Lincoln City Budget Committee. Uh, today is Tuesday, May 8th. The time is now 6.02. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Dick Anderson? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Here. Judy Casper is excused. Deanna Hinton? Here. Riley Hoagland? Here. Kevin Honbaum? Here. Doug Holbrook? Here. Rick Mark? Here. Chester Norikis? Yes. And Nancy Oxenholt? Here. D. Ritchie. Here. Susan Walkie. Here. And Don Williams. Here. Uh, can we just say we'll end at 9 o'clock now? <laughs> yep. Yep. So, um, can wait for the end to open up for public comment if you may want to. Yes. Yeah, since there's nobody here. Uh, I believe we're at, um, what, would you like to go over the, what we just been handed? Well, uh, yeah, let me just touch on those briefly. So I, on your desk before you are five different documents. I'm not gonna go through all of those, but I will just touch on uh, three of those. The first one um, is, is an email uh, uh, train for, with between uh, committee member Honbaum, uh, committee member Hinton and myself regarding <coughs> TAF doc and also regarding um, a long-term plan. I mentioned it in my email that that plan exists um, it is the TAF redevelopment plan that was put together by Urban Renewal. Uh, this is online and it's available for anybody to look at. Much of it is based upon the history that's contained in this book, which is called TAF, A Transformation of a Waterfront Community to a Resort Town. Um, and so you're welcome to look at that. This suggestion I would have, not during the budget meetings, but in the future is that if you would like to get a report from the staff on what has been completed, what is in the works, and what is yet to be completed in this redevelopment plan, we're happy to, we're happy to do that. Hey, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I just want to let folks know I talked about bringing uh, the plans my wife and I had drawn up. We cannot find them yet. Okay. Uh, we are still digging them. They exist somewhere. She guarantees me they are here, but I don't have them for tonight. Okay. Uh, the second document that we'll touch base on a little bit later, uh, no one had requested this, but we anticipated this is a rate comparison for the water and sewer rates with other communities. Uh, we do plan on going through water and sewer tonight, and so we'll refer to this when we get to that portion of the meeting. The third document that I wanted to spend just a few minutes on is the one that's dated May 4th. Uh, items uh, from the 43018 budget committee meeting. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these tonight, but to just let you know what they are. Uh, the first part is there are several suggestions that you have made to changing the budget um, in order to make that flow as easily as possible. I have put those changes in the form of motions. So also included with that is the uh, committee member who. Um, whose idea it was to, to make those changes. So if you want to go forward with those, uh, these are possible motions. They're not the f final ones that need to be done, but we're expecting more discussions tonight that could change it, but this is just a running tally. It was easier for us to do that uh, this week than it was to try to catch everything at the very end. The um, uh, one, one part to put that is that as you know, in the budgeting or in accounting where there's an increase, there's gotta be a decrease somewhere else. If there's an increase in the revenue, there's gotta be an increase in expenditures. If there is an increase in an expenditure, there's gotta be a decrease in expenditures or vice versa, that kind of stuff. So um, if for anything where we couldn't specifically identify a corresponding increase or decrease, we increased or decreased the fund balances, okay? So if I was going to raise Debbie's salary by a million dollars, uh, finance budget salary would go up by a million dollars and then the uh, fund balance would go down by a million dollars and all of the rest of us would be negotiating for our own raises. Um, <laughs> the second thing, the second part of this um, is that I have kept a running list of the effects of your proposed changes on the $945,000, which is carried in the non-departmental 
uh, general fund non-departmental expenditures as land purchased. Uh, so um, on page four of this, you can see that we begin with $945,000. Uh, so far, we have had enough expenditures to bring us in at a minus $343,000, or proposed requests. Um, and I might also put the one, make a statement that there was one uh, idea, idea that was brought up by Committee Member Mark that was to um, save a portion of that. There was no discussion as to how much that is, so you'll see that it's just X's. Uh, and so that can be filled in the blank. The other thing that I've kept a running list is the effect on the unappropriated fund balance for the general fund. As you can see from the discussions that we've had and how we've interpreted what you have said, we started at $6,775,456, and we are at $5,974,226. And, and some of that are decreases, some of that are increases. Now also in that, we, uh, corresponding to what we just talked about, there's some X's because we didn't have a, 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 an amount uh, that we would go from. The final thing is that there's some other requests that the staff had. There's uh, several things that we're still working on, and uh, my goal is to provide those to you by Monday of next week so that you have an entire week to look through that, plus anything that we discussed tonight, and that would give you about a week to um, contemplate it, ask any questions during the week that you may have, and then uh, be ready for hopefully our last meeting. The other two documents um, were just requests that were made. Um, one was some requests by uh, committee member Oxenholt, and the other was the request for the vehicle list uh, um, that we currently have. So unless there are any questions on those, um, we're ready to jump into the budget. I have a, sure, sorry. I have a question on the, the page that um, Nancy uh, had asked about with the opening balance of 32 million. It's the one that starts with high run and has interest for the past quarter investment in the LGIP. Can you, can you kind of talk through that sheet and what those, what those numbers mean, what they are? The, the chart? Yes. Okay, um, the first line is the opening balance, so like your beginning bank balance. That's our be beginning bank balance of yep. money we have in reserve, or? No, that, that's the balance. money that we have in the state pool, that's okay. invested in the state pool. And the purchases basically are, is money that we've put in, transferred in from our operating bank account. Redemptions is money that we've transferred out to our operating account, and then the closing balance, and the dividends is the interest. And that money that's invested is from what? What is that? It's city, it's city reserves. Right. It's, it's it, all it, funds. Oh, so it's reserves. It's, well, it's all funds. It's the cash flow that we have from all funds right now. Yeah. We, we, keep, we only keep enough money in our operating account to cover um, bills for the week plus a little bit. Um, so the, um, the vast majority of our funds that we have are, are invested in the gotcha. state pool. So it's basically unspent money so far in this budget year, but it's budgeted. Yeah, it's our fund balances. How much of it is budgeted versus unbudgeted? How much of it is contingency fund or slash reserves or whatever the words are you using for it <laughs> versus um, stuff that's already set aside because it's budgeted that we're going to be spending it in this calendar year, in this fiscal year? We don't split it out between what's um, not budgeted and what is budgeted. Um, so I, you know, look at that. You have to look at a budget summary to see. Um, so, like page page two it shows that we have eight eight million in unappropriated fund balance. So that's monies that we can't so touch. That, that would be in the thirty two. That would be in the thirty two. Also, um, the contingency of five point six million. Uh, we're not planning to spend that. That's in the thirty two. Basically, everything's in the thirty two except what we need for immediate cash flow. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, and Ron, I'm sorry if I was drifting, reading something else while you're speaking. Um, I think I asked the question last time about the liability insurance and a breakdown of that. 
Is that I think that's one I'm still working on. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. That was one that we sent last week that had a combined of, we sent it to Mr. Ritchie that had a combined of all of the cities or all of the funds into one. Yeah, in the, in the general fund, um, it's in two places. It's in the police have their own expense um, because they do a lot of activity. <laughs> and then the, um, for, for particularly for professional liability and, and vehicle liability uh, uh, coverage. The rest of it is in non-departmental uh, general fund. So here, let me show you. Um, so page 24, one, two, three, four, five, about six lines down, it says insurance and bonds. Uh, proposed amount is 82,100. So that's the insurance. It's, it's both um, general liability and property insurance. That's uh, sp specifically allocated to the police. And for the rest of the general fund, it's on page uh, 29, I believe. Yes, on 29, which is another 14,000. The report that was sent out to today, yes, yesterday, last week, um, that has a summary of all funds by the expense code. If you look at the expense code, um, and if you look at that expense Side total, email, about two, three it will give you the amount for the entire city. I, I guess my question was, um, because it's a shared, uh, kind of like uh, GIS and such, is, do we get a breakdown per department that says, okay, here's here's our liability for the cultural center, or no, for the uh, community it's, center, and and I, I just have a, uh, it's not it's, a huge discussion at this point, but I've got to imagine some areas of our city carry a greater liabilities because of the nature of what they are, and, you know, swimming pool and diving and wet surfaces I'm just I wanted to kind of see which departments are bearing a burden or if they are or not if they're just okay. sharing equally. allocate it by fund uh -huh. um, except for uh, and PD I think I can get that but it'll take me a little okay, bit more. Appreciate it. thank you okay shall we Okay, uh, if it's okay with the chair, we'd actually like to begin in a different order and do water and sewer and streets first. Um, we wanna make sure we have plenty of time, especially the water and sewer, and not push that towards the end, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair. It's fine with me. Okay. We will be beginning on page 54 of the budget. That is the Water Utility Operation Fund. Uh, the revenue for this fund comes from primarily from user fees. Those are the fees that we charge uh, for the use of our, for the uh, use of our water, and um, uh, it is four set four million seven hundred thirty one thousand five hundred sixty dollars, which is three hundred forty eight thousand eight hundred seventy three dollars greater than 2018. The primary reason is because the beginning fund balance is $324,168 greater than what we were projecting, uh, than what we were projecting it to be. All other revenues have remained roughly the same. Uh, this reflects what we've discussed earlier, which is an emphasis on the sewer fund. Let me take a moment and talk about these two together. Uh, they are, op um, Water is comprises of two types of funds, uh, three types of funds. It com is comprised of the operating fund, capital funds, and debt service funds. Sewer is the same. Sewer operating, sewer capital funds, and sewer debt service funds. Um, but when we send out your bill and you get your utility bill, it's all combined. You'll see them as separate line items, but the bottom is 50, 60 some odd dollars uh, with that. Um, we have as I mentioned earlier, passed out to you a rate comparison that shows the water and the sewer rates. We have had for many years 
the policy and the practice of making smaller increases uh, each year to the uh, to the water and sewer fund for the rate increases rather than waiting until we have one year where we have to make large increases that's been a policy that has worked very well uh, for the city and the the increases have been fairly incremental um, this year one of the one of the main goals that uh, we have have and we have discussed with the city council is trying to to put the sewer fund on the same financial footing as far as its debt as the water fund and what that means is that in the water fund uh, all of the debt that we have had and that we would anticipate having in the future can be paid for by the rates and we do not have to go out for a general obligation bond uh, um, and use property taxes. That does, is not the same uh, for the sewer fund. We have generally used property taxes to pay the debt on the sewer. Uh, these funds are meant to stand on their own. They're not meant to be supported by taxes. Uh, so what we looked at is that if you take your rate, uh, your combined water and sewer utility rate, and in increase that by the inflation rate of 3.9 percent and took that entire amount which is a dollar 97 a month off the base the two base rates and put that towards the sewer with nothing with no increase towards the water and we're able to do that for about three years we think we can get the um, we think we can get the sewer in a position where it can fund the debt for its uh, for its capital projects through the utility fees. We expect that it will take about a million dollars a year to be able to pay for those debts. And, uh, and this, by doing that, we would avoid then having to try to go out for bonds. Um, and then the increases that you would see would be small, incremental, a couple bucks per year, about 4% on your total utility bill. Now what that means for the water fund is that we'll have to hold things tight for about three years but there is sufficient capacity in that that we think we're able to do that. And at the end of that three year period, then we can go back at looking at both of them as the small incremental increases to the two of them and have the city in a position where the, uh, the rates can pay for the sewer bonds. As I mentioned, we have about uh, uh, $20 million, uh, 15 to $20 million, depending on which projects actually get approved by the city council in approve, improvements over the next 20 years and uh, and while the city is the city sewer system is in good shape um, we want to keep it that way we don't want to defer its maintenance and so that's why we're trying to set up this long-range financing plan so that's the reason why you're seeing the revenues in the water fund remain uh, relatively the same any increase you would see in the utility uh, fees would be as a result of growth or increased water use um, by our by our uh, customers, and not as a result of um, of a rate increase. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means for the sewer fund in just a moment. Are there any questions on that part of it? Yes, please, Mr. Chair. Yes. Just to be clear, Mr. Chandler, you're proposing a increase of 3.9 on the utility bill on the total utility bill of the two um, of the two uh, water and base rates combined mm -hmm. three per, three point nine percent increase yes sir thank you <coughs> okay sorry I'm having trouble getting back in here the doggone things okay um, so Total operating expenses um, for the water um, are four million sixty one thousand and eighty two dollars which is two hundred and seventy nine thousand nine hundred and twenty three dollars or seven percent greater than the 2018 budget um, just a few highlights uh, as to as to um, uh, what uh, these expenditures under salary and benefits uh, total salary and benefits is one million three hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred sixty five dollars which is uh, 
uh, $3,032 or 0.2% less than the 2018 budget. Materials and services um, are $778,288, which is $44,224 or 5.4% less than the budget. Uh, a couple of uh, three items I wanted to particularly mention. Computer software maintenance uh, is uh, $13,000 less. Um, the treatment maintenance plant, the treatment plant maintenance system is $22,000 less, and that reflects projects that were completed this year. And then item number 6222001 uh, includes $12,100 for uh, turbidity meters replacements, and I'm going to let Lyle explain what a turbidity meter is. So, I'm finding it right off, but it's a it's a meter that is we're replacing that tests the turbidity from the creek, so it tests um, how much um, dirt and debris is in, you know, coming in through the water. So it's in our lab and we use it for its testing equipment. Okay, and then uh, in the debt service and transfers, uh, a couple things to note in this, there's a $475,000 decrease in the transfers to the water bond debt service fund. That reflects the payment of a debt that uh, has taken place. And then an increase of $804,401 to, to the capital funds of the water. And that will cover the capital expenditures that we're proposing for this year. Uh, we do have one water debt remaining um, on our books. Okay. Any questions on that before I jump into the water yeah, capital? Uh, Mr. Chair, I I, and again, this is me being new and not really. Uh, so, uh, the capital fund, is there a capital fund that, how does that, is that on here somewhere? There is. There's is several that, funds. Separate, okay. And they're separate from this one, and we'll be going into those in just a minute. Mr. Chair. Ron, um, just going back to uh, the total of salaries and benefits and stuff, looks like we had planned something in last year's budget um, that didn't happen because we've got it actual, but now we're planning it again this year. Are you talking about regular salaries, that first well, I'm line? I'm just going all the way down to the bottom of personnel costs. So regular salaries is changing quite a bit because we've had some turnover. We've had some people retire who are at top at scale, and we have two, two positions in particular. Uh, those two positions alone have a um, $35,000 savings, um, and, that we, and that flows through on taxes and PERS and... I guess what I'm looking at is when I look at 2016-17, you know what, roughly that's in line. The actual is in line with our actual for 17-18. We bumped up our budget in 17-18 and in the bottom, you know, totally up at the bottom. Um, but we're more in line with 15 and 16. See that? So I, I'm just making an assumption that you... It, it, uh, either a person is didn't we didn't hire in the back end for this budget or no it, it wasn't a position that wasn't hired it had to do with turnover and vacancies and and, and the the savings in the in the turnover have um, yeah. over saved the cola increases boy that's a lot of impact uh, it, it yeah <laughs> okay. all right thanks mr chair yes Lila in the message. One of the projects listed is South 48th Street Extension, 24-inch, pardon me, Belcourt Pressure Improvement? Yes, that, project's, that project has been in the um, 2001 Water Master Plan, and so it, we're tying in lines to improve the pressure on Belcourt. They have, they have a low pressure issue there. And so it's, it's um, also Northwest 50th Street, so it'll oh. improve their water pressure. So it's not putting in a larger pipe? No, not necessarily. It's tying, tying them into different pipe, pipelines. Thank you. Okay. 
Any other questions on the operations before we jump into capital? Okay. Um, if you go to page 57 of your budget, um, we'll begin discussing the, the capital then. Um, three main parts to this. The water system construction is budgeted at $850,000. 48th Street, which was just mentioned, is $240,000 and a water reserve at $1,081,129. Um, let me just uh, <coughs> find my right page here and mention the... Uh, it's all three of them combined. I just wanted to mention the projects that we have. Um, Lila can give the details of them, but uh, we'll bring them up. Um, in the Systems Capital Reserve Fund, Water Fund, which is page 57 of your budget, um, under item number 634020, there are three projects associated with that. The Schooner Creek Road Water Line Replacement at $150,000. Bell Court to 50th, a pressure improvement of $100,000, and the West Devils Lake Road water line northeast 21st to 28th Street of $600,000. Um, would you like to cover those, Lila? Um, the Schooner Creek is um, the up, you know, where our water plant is, so it's the upper Schooner Creek. It's the line that's um, actually been leaking for some time, and so we're replacing that and it's designed and ready to go to bid. So you'll, you would see if approved, you would see that in July, um, one of the first meetings. And then the Belcourt um, 50th pressure improvement at 100,000, that's one I just explained. And then we have West Devils Lake Road water line replacement from Northeast 21st. That's where our, um, it's not a through street, but, but that's the name of the street. And we have a pump station there. We did a large project from um, the west side of the highway down 13th, down West Devils Lake Road, all the way to this pump station, almost to 22nd Street, Northeast 22nd. So this is a, a second phase of that. And so it will go, we'll put the water line under the bridge, right next to the new boardwalk. And we have a bridge project that ODOT is funding to replace that bridge. And so we'll finish that water line, get it off the bridge, and it'll go past the hospital. So it'll be ready for the new hospital project and this was in our 2001 um, master plan as well so we're these projects are pretty much the end of that particular master plan and then there is another phase to it but we'll wait um, you know for a future year for that one it goes all it goes <coughs> from 28 then all the way to Holmes Road on page 58 uh, this is the SDC, which is Systems Development Charge Reimbursement Water. Uh, this fund and the next fund that we'll discuss, they are uh, the projects are limited to those based upon the state law of how you can use systems development charges. There is one project that is proposed in this budget. Uh, Lila mentioned it a few minutes ago of the South 48th Street extension, which is South 48th extension of a 20 four inch mainline relocation for $240,000. And that one's been on our, our books for a while and we're actually looking, at, it's a wall that's um, on top of a 24 inch line and so we're looking at actually moving the wall instead of moving the water line. Is so that southeast 48? Southeast 48, down at the bottom where the, the big block wall is. And then the final construction fund for water is uh, on page 59, the SDC improvement, uh, improvement <coughs> fund. And there are no projects planned for this. The $107,884 you see in expenditures is just being held in reserve for future projects. And then finally, um, on page 60, we have our debt service fund, which is the water bonds fund. As I mentioned, we have one bond that is still outstanding. Um, the funds are, you'll notice in, uh, this is page 60, you'll notice in um, resource or revenue number 4701770, transfer from water fund $400,000. That reflects the rates that the, that the rates are being used to pay for this debt. 
um, the rates are picked up and carried um, in the operations fund. Uh, the debt service on this fund is uh, $395,000 with $71,083 in interest payments. Do you remember the one that's debt that's higher? The final payment on that uh, bond is fiscal year 23-24. 23-24, yeah. Five years after this one that we're budgeting for. Other questions that you might have on any part of the water budget? Uh, I had two, um, and this is uh, back when I did my little newspaper stint, uh, Lila, the, the issue with the landslide, the landslide along Schooner Creek, um, I thought that was going to be threat possibly threatening that road back to the water treatment plant. What, what was the status of that? Um, we've been monitoring it, and it um, it has stopped. Whatever the spring was that caused the the damage there, it's we just keep um, keep an eye on it. And, you know, obviously it could become some issue in the future, but we've had some geologists take a look at it. And so we're, we're just keeping a real close eye on it. And, and then I, I also remember from that time some talk about, was there, is there some future need for a bigger reservoir or, uh, for the city? Uh, eventually, down, down yes, that's, that's in our 2020 plan. And, and so, you know, we'd be saving, saving some of this water funding toward a new reservoir in the future. That was my question, yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, uh, uh, building maintenance, system maintenance, 621001 and 621010. We've got an increase of uh, 50,000 plus another 20, 70,000. Did I miss saying why that's such a big leap? On page 62, building maintenance, system maintenance. We're not there yet. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. Running ahead we're, of We're things. still in water. We're still in water. All right. Well, then <laughs> hang on and we'll get to it. Thank you. So terribly bored. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If no other questions, we'll move on to sewer. Uh, the sewer operating fund, uh, which is found on page 61 of your budget. Um, revenue is $4,825,855, which is $136,248 or 3% greater than 2018. The beginning fund balance is $149,021 less than the budgeted amount for fiscal year 2018. Charges for the services reflect the increase in the, bu in the base rate for utilities, which equals 3.9% or $1.97. Um, that equals $297,579. It actually equates to an 8% increase for that fund. But again, we, when we talk about the 3.9%, it's the combination of the two rates, okay? Um, uh, it's important to note that as we as we look at this for the next two to three years, maybe, um, that uh, we're not planning on banking these funds. We are planning on using them, but we are planning on using them for capital projects so that we can begin to work on those that list of projects that uh, that we have in our long-term capital facilities plan. Um, Salaries and benefits, $1,351,685, which is $1,623 or 0% less than fiscal year 2018. Materials and budget, 1800 or materials and services, $1,829,818, which is $217,224 or 13.5% greater than last year's budget. A couple of things that we wanted to, um, a few things we wanted to mention in this. Um, item number 6201119, contracted services. 
uh, has a $10,000 increase to reflect increases in the meter reading and the mailing services. Um, item 6201121, sampling and testing services, has a $29,000 increase, which reflects the increased testing of Schooner Creek and storm water testing. And I'm going to ask Lila to take a moment and talk about the <coughs> increased testing that we're having to do. every other year there's some new regulations that they've come out with and you can't tell exactly what year they're going to become in effect and so that's why we we've budgeted more for that in um, anticipation of those new rules it, I mean it's so four, four times the amount of last year yeah and, and that's the EPA the new testing that they that they're requiring and, and then with the meter reading it, you know, we're reading. So this is part of our MPDES permit, our National Pollution Discharge Permit. Oh, not so that's actual why meters. I, I was I was thinking um, water for a second, but th this is all new testing that will go along with our new permit. Okay. So, so that's not water meter reading. <laughs> not not water meter reading. This is sewer. So, like, Lila, if I can, I, I'm remembering that one time we were worried. So I, I, about. Um, there were threats of, of water temperature our, our, uh, after sewer fluent going into Schooner Creek. And there was noise about that was too warm for the, and we'd have to start cooling it down before it went into the. Right, and you know, we don't, they're working on our permit right now, so, so I don't really have the answer to that, but we did the mixing zone study that council approved and gave them that information ahead of time so they didn't just set the rule on what they thought it would be and so that's probably going to save us um, quite a bit that's in still an issue is still an issue it. though or something they're, it could they're be. at least looking yeah it could, it could be. be okay but as soon as we know about that permit we'll bring that back to you the next item that we want to mention is item this is on page 62 six two zero three zero zero one uh, electrical power, uh, you notice that it's a $75,000 increase from last year's budget. That is reflecting actually the history over the last couple of years, uh, the 2017 budget, what we're anticipating for the end of this year. And Lila, you can go ahead and explain why we're seeing such a huge increase in power. Um, and that is our new centrifuge. And, and so it, we're running it four days a week and it just takes quite a bit more power to run that equipment. So for those of you who have not had a chance to go out to the um, uh, treatment plant, please do so. It's worthwhile. Or if you just want to lecture on sewer, just come back to my office. I've got some bottles to show you. <laughs> uh, but essentially, uh, over the last couple of years, we changed part of our processing. Um, in, the, in the past, uh, well, when sewage comes into the treatment plant, I'll give you the non-scientific version. It's split into two parts. The solids go one way, the water goes another. The water is cleaned, and it is then uh, discharged back into Schooner Creek. The, wa the, the sewage is cleaned, and under the old process, it would be put out to, into a lagoon where it would sit until we empty the lagoon. And that lagoon uh, sludge, um, which is mostly liquid. It's about uh, over 90% liquid? Yes. Yeah, it's about 92% liquid. It would be sent out as a fertilizer to put on farmers' fields. And, and the actual fertilizer, or the actual amount was 6% solids that would actually go in the trucks. And, uh, but what we, what the pattern that we've been seeing over the past few years is fewer and fewer application sites. And, uh, and so we were left with having to either go buy property somewhere that we can apply it or find a different way to process it. Uh, we chose the different way to process it. We're using a centrifuge. Um, that centrifuge dries it out to 20% uh, solids, 80% water, which is kind of the consistency of like a cake. mud, like a cakey mud. Um, and that has been cleaned to the point that we can take it to the landfill. And so that's where we're disposing of the sludge um, at, at this point in time. There is a process. You could take it one step farther, 
where you could clean it to the point uh, where it could be used as fertilizer on your garden, um, on your grass, at home, and so forth. Uh, it's quite an expensive process. Uh, we have, we have uh, the plans on how to do that, but at this point there's no immediate plans to try to do that. Mr. Chair? Yes. Is all of our sludge currently being taken to the landfill, Lila? Yes, everything that's produced out of the centrifuge is. And what is the condition of our ponds? Our ponds are full, and so we're coming up with some ideas. There is actually um, some money in this budget under sludge removal. To We have a new, new process that we were going to try, and that would be um, dredging into um, these large inner tubes and, ha and letting them then weep back into the water out of that weep back into the um, sludge lagoons and then we'd have the solids inside this this large rubber tube and you actually can slice off pieces of that pick it up with a backhoe put it in a truck and haul that to the landfill and so we were looking at that as a way to um, process our our sludge lagoons and so it would be it would be um, a longer type process but it, it would eventually give us room back in those lagoons which we want to have if something, we have one centrifuge, so mm -hmm. if, if it's down for maintenance, mm. then we need to have a place to go. Sure, sure. There's, there, the lagoons are not leaking currently, correct? No, they're not. Thank you. I might point out that on the centrifuge, the reason why the power has gone up is because it heats it. Mm -hmm. It runs four, four days a week. Yes, Dick. Um, Lila, didn't we have an offset for this we we anticipated this knowing that we were going but when we clean the lagoons um, I, I was thinking that we wouldn't be spending the 250,000 a year to put those on pastures but in fact we're spending that same money taking the dried sludge now to landfills Correct. so there really isn't an offset for this increased power from this new process that we're doing because we're no, no not at this time our, our trucking costs time we're we're monitoring see we started doing this um, just in August last year and so we're monitoring every single amount of money that's spent on it and so we'll bring a report True. back to council the, you know, as we sludge. as we move along and what polymers you know we're working on the different polymers that we add to it and some are less expensive we're trying to find the ones that work really well and so did, did we have an offset Council, you're though? seeing a little bit of an offset um, basically the power cost if you look at sludge removal six two one zero zero one five on sixty two we had okay. budgeted four hundred thousand dollars we're anticipating two hundred and twenty thousand dollars this year that's primarily because we have not emptied the sludge beds that include both emptying the sludge beds and the centrifuge so next year is three hundred and ten thousand dollars which again is the tipping fees for the landfill plus some sludge yeah, removal sludge. that Lyd has been talking about. So there is an offset to that. What would it take to pump them out completely? Um, probably, probably that four hundred thousand. We looked at that number before. Could, so could take out all three of them and empty them. There's two. There's two. The one that is completely empty that we use as a as that's an the overflow for water if we that's ever have third, to turn out the water. That's oh, our, that's our the third, third one. one. So we have two sludge lagoons that we would have to empty. And there's still not a, a not not, but solar energy in that. You know, there's. No, we've we've done the analysis of solar on at the plant. Yeah. And at the water plant, and so we did. We've done quite a few different projects that save energy there. But we haven't looked at the solar real closely. We have um, so many geese and birds out in that area that they'd probably be an issue. And I, I can get those reports on. Just to see it. And I forgot to ask about when we were on the water. You know, I was reading or hearing about Newport's having their an issue with the, the land around their reservoirs being sprayed. And so they're concerned with chemical composition of the runoff to the water plant and I know a couple of years ago we had purchased more land up or to the sides of the creek so that we could protect it and then just as a way to say hey you know is there a consideration or is there well, 
are we capable of handling that? What we do with the county, um, we make sure that they are not um, spraying above our watershed. So they're, they're not spraying above our water intake. You know, quite often they, they'll come through and they have to show us permits um, for that spraying. And so they'll, they'll um, actually inject on the knotweed and some of the really bad invasive species, but they do not spray like out of their truck, you know, usually they go along the edge of the road and spray. And so we make sure that they don't do that above our watershed or our, our stream intake. Keep a close eye on that. Chuck? Yes. Follow-up question. Will they, um, like the knotweed, will they inject those if they find them above the intake? Yes, and they do that um, by backpack, so they're, they're on foot. I think they used Roundup for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, you know, I don't want to go direct, way out there. On the you plan, know what I mean? I mean plan, I'm so. out there, but I don't mean anything comes in here, you know. But, <laughs> you know, just, you know, just because it's, it's, it's important and, you know, it's something that's current, you know, as far as that, you know, our water supply and, um, you know, what surrounds the, the land around it, you know. it's. So, Mr. Chair? Yes. I could go back to building maintenance, system maintenance, and treatment plant maintenance. <coughs> Sorry, we're looking at about a $110,000 increase. Under the uh, 6210001, building maintenance includes a $50,000 increase, and that's to reflect the sealing of the membrane on the, of the lab and the shop building roofs. Lila, you want to explain that a little bit more? Yes, we have um, really old roofs out there on the on the buildings and so this one is just it's just worn out and we've um, done some work on the HVACs out there already and we have um, some more to do on the shop building part of it for HVACs so we have 25,000 for the um, HVAC unit and then 50,000 for the lab building re-roofing okay so the, the HVAC is the system maintenance no the no, HVAC is the the building the, maintenance. The two items and in the building maintenance is the it's the roof and the HVAC. And under system maintenance, which is item number um, uh, six two one zero zero one zero, the increase of twenty thousand dollars is to reflect uh, sewer line repairs. Um, one of the as part of our um, the work that we have been doing is increased cameraing increased uh, uh, trying to detect um, water outflows from the sewer pipes and so the increase is to reflect the repairs to the sewer pipes that we th that we find okay and then the treatment plant maintenance another forty thousand down a little further six two one one zero five zero the forty eight thousand dollars so let me see here eight spare lamps and, and eight spare sleeves. So that's instead of using, that's our ultraviolet. Instead of using the chlorine. And that unit upgrade. Then we have uh, some UV ballast to replace. We have, uh, this, this one is a small number, but install an automatic emergency bypass valve. So these are all just items in the plant that costs that are associated with these in looking at the replacement of the uh, uh, replacement of two UV banks plus the spare lamps and eight spare sleeves is sixteen thousand uh, dollars the two spare UV ballasts is eighteen hundred dollars uh, installing automatic uh, emergency bypass valves are fifteen thousand dollars the current uh, replace current non-working sensors in the digesters um, are three thousand dollars and replace one set of the disc filter fabric and the lila can explain more what that means is eighteen thousand dollars those are the primary changes that you're seeing in this year's budget that were not in last year's budget you're also seeing that we had um, a, a systems motor uh, that we have replaced this year that's not 
this is this six thousand dollars that's not included in the next year's budget and is there a thought of the lifespan of these things will we see this increase each year or are we gonna see this expenditure each year every two five um, depending on you know some of it some of it are, are things that we just have to we replace you know part of them each year and so it, it it's varies. just a big leap it, just, it varies it doesn't mean that it's that all of it's ongoing you know some of it are replacement that that lasts for a few years okay but it's all mechanical and so like the membranes we haven't had to replace those for um, a few years since the plant was built so some of these are okay you know, one time expenditure wearing out things that you have built they're essentially filters <coughs> what I can do on this uh, is to provide you uh, a history over say the last 10 years of this item so you can see what kind of fluctuations there are in it mr. chair yes um, you answered this question um, in my long list of questions that I submitted before we started but um, I just think it would be a good idea to bring it up again and that's the vector truck um, and because we were talking about this before the budget um, meetings about replacing it and they're pretty expensive and, and now you're looking at leasing but I not sure we, where I we see actually that in here. Have that, that is in this budget, and it's under um, page six item um, page 63, 6310101 other vehicles, mm -hmm. and so it's in there as as a purchase um, over a um, five to six year period. If um, you know our sewer rate, or I'm sorry sewer rate is tied to the water rate right so it's an equal your effort I'm sorry but how much water you use you're also charged that much sewer right uh, yes the overage is based upon your water consumption it, are there instances where the sewerage is more than their water consumption like at a campground or a, an RV park or things like that Do you have any situations no. where we meter sewer no, it's all calculated off of our, our the water consumption. So there could be. There's so much. The other way. There could the be, but we would not know. Okay. And it balances out. So we have the vector in there, and then we would um, either trade in or sell our existing vector to help offset that. I just found a solution. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Lila, on page 18 of the budget message, there's a list of bullets at the top of the page, and the second one from the bottom is Northwest 21st from Highway 101 to Harbor Avenue. And that is um, a street that, that we planned on paving and improving some of the sidewalk access and creating some parking, and the sewer line in that street, similar to Northwest 20th the 19th, um, is, needs to be replaced, and so that's on that list along with uh, Mill Scott, um, part of the force thing going down by the elementary school. Thank you. So there's, um, when we get to the transfers, uh, there's two items that I want to mention. Overall, you'll notice that there is the, a repayment on an inter loan, interfund loan repayment that uh, was paid off and is no longer reflected in, in the next year's budget. And there is a $750,000 transfer to the capital funds, the sewer capital funds, and we'll talk about those fu projects in just a minute. The ending fund balance, uh, we're projecting at $626,012, which is uh, oh, about $40,000 40, $40, more than what we had budgeted, but about uh, $200,000. $275,000 less than our projected estimate. Okay. Sewer capital funds. Okay. So we're beginning on page 64 of the budget. Um, 
You'll note that this is the fund in which you're seeing the, you're seeing the transfer of the $750,000. It's showing up on item number 4701780 under resources or revenue. Uh, total resources is equal to $829,059. Um, and then we have sewer maintenance construction of $750,000. The projects associated with that is um, $150,000 for the Northwest 21st Street from Highway 101 to Harbor Avenue and $600,000 in Nell Scott Southeast High School Drive, a force main, the first phase. And so Lila, if you'll discuss those two, I'd appreciate it. 21st is the one that um, I mentioned we're replacing the sewer lines that, and it has I've looked at the TV um, video of it and it has quite a few holes in it. And we tried to just patch it, but it's, it needs to be totally replaced. And then we'll be paving the road that's in the paving project. And then um, Nell Scott uh, Southeast High School Drive is the one I mentioned from the elementary school um, down to probably about 48th Street or further, as far as we can go with that amount of funding. Will that also be a repaving? Yes, that, that, that would just be part of the project. It's not, not paving the whole road, but you know, paving our patch. patch. Yeah. Will that, redu will that get that smell out of that area? Yes, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, the next two funds are the SDC reimbursement fund on page 65 and the SDC improvement fund on page 66. You'll both note that both of those, there's no construction projects and they're just being held in, the funds are just being held in reserve for future projects. And then finally on page 68, we have the um, sewer bond debts. There are three. Um, uh, series 2011, Series 2013, and Series 2015. Uh, in 11, the debt service is 463,370 dollars, and the interest is, uh, or the principal payment is 463,370, and the interest payment is 162,596. Um, Um, on series 2013, uh, it's the principal payment is $130,000. The interest is $231,050. And then on series 2015, the interest or the principal payment is 50, 558889 and the interest is 8173 and Debbie's looking up to tell you the, the expiration dates on those. <laughs> it's very small print. <laughs> this is page four of your budget. It looks like it goes through uh, 2029, 2030, to 2930 the school year. So quite a while yet. We do have, a, we do have one, um, the 2015, Two thousand fifteen bond. Um, this the eighteen nineteen year is actually the last principal payment. Um, however, the two thousand thirteen bond um, kicks up in 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 the same amount the principal payment, and so your total debt payment for the next few years is the same, even though you've got a bond ending. Yes. Total balance. Total, total balance that's owed on those? On, on the 2011, it's four million, and then we've got nine million on the, nine million seven hundred fifty thousand on the 2013. 
and then the 2015 is just what's current. On page four, at the very front, it shows um, the amortization schedules. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions on any of the sewer? Ron, yes, um, and I, before we go on to out of sewer and water, um, and I'm, I hate to jump all the way back to water, but when we were talking about rate increases, in the water system, we have a high peak time fee. Um, and I, you know, we've stuck it in there as a, a kind of a token fee. Is there any, um, impact, financial impact, by you know, uh, increasing that? Because it, it, as I recall, it's, uh, what, July through September or something period of time. Does that throw off much revenue, and, and where would it be? Um, I took a look at that, at the idea of uh, being revenue neutral. So I may not have done exactly what you were thinking of, in which you would have a higher rate in the summer, but a lower rate in the winter time, when you're expecting it to be less. Um, and so I, I came up with a pretty big jump in the summertime, but the revenues came out neutral. So I may have not interpreted what you wanted exactly. Yeah. Well, what I was looking at, I, I um, again. Uh, typically, I, I think that our base rate covers folks summer and winter. It's constant anyway. And it's only when you jump out of the base rate that you start hitting a g higher. And so I, I was looking at the summer because um, our water sources are low with trying to conserve and trying to look, focus in on that. If, if we raised that period of time, um, does it, and to what percent? In the base rate or in, no, the, in, in the? No, in just the <coughs> usage rate over and above the base rate during that peak time. Let me run that again because I'm quite certain I did that not as you would ask. Okay. So. okay. But I, Are you talking about increasing the peak charge more right. than the 3.9%? Right. Right. Okay. To, to offset, the three, to lower the 3.9%. Oh. So I, what I was trying to think if if there was any formula. I see what you're you know, saying. Three percent regular and higher high peak. Right. I see what you're saying. Okay. That, but it may not. It may be so small that it doesn't. You'd have to whack it so high. There's <laughs> also, you know, is there um, data that would say what's the average? monthly cons cons consumption rate for what does 3,000 gallons of water gives you? Is that something that can just... I mean what the average homes consumes or what they're allowed to consume for the No, consumer? no, no, not what's allowed to, just what in general is. Like, you know, some of them, do, some of the cities don't have a base of, you know, ours is 3,000 gallons. Just as an idea of what that is. Just, I don't know. We have usages by customer, so we can calculate averages off of that. Are you also talking about a comparison with other communities for no, or just, just what the I'm average just, usage is? Just what, 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 what an average family of four right. uh, without daughters <laughs> <laughs> showering. I, I, don't I, know take that, quick, I have long hair and I take a quick shower. I don't think we can do it by family size, but we could, we could do an average overall. We can, do an, we can look just at the households. In general, you know, just to say, hey, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's 3,000 gallons. What is that? Desert we could do it by month. We could, yeah, we can break, that's not hard for us to break that down by month so you can see the rise and peak of the usages as well. Yeah, but you're looking for people in the household. It, I think he's trying to figure out, you know, is it. The only, the only way we would be able to do that is to try to, you know, I don't know how to yeah. do that unless you tied it to addresses themselves. And you don't know We know many. what the census says is the average household size, but. I'm just saying in general, just as an idea of, you know. But I think we can get some general ideas. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, sir. Did, didn't uh, we determine 3,000 was average for Lincoln City at some point? I think that. I think, I think that's, 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 that's right. I think that's what we came up, why we came up with that. But. Any other questions on uh, sewer? 
Mr. Chair, since we have Lila still up here, can we go to streets? Sounds wonderful. Okay. Uh, streets again is broken out into separate funds. There are um, street operation funds and page, street pages, capital page, funds. Pages. We're beginning on page 36 of the budget. 14 of the narrative. Yes, sir. The total um, expenditures uh, for street operations, again, this is page 36 of the budget, is uh, $2,319,645, which is $43,222, or 2% less than 2018. The transient room tax makes up 99% of the total operating revenues, uh, and that is revenues less beginning fund balance. Okay. Um, that's important to remember because uh, the transient room tax is significant to our ability to maintain our roads and as we will see also our parks. Um, operating uh, expenditures, which is total expenditures less the fund balance, is $1,450,239, which is $47,038 or 3% less than the 2018 budget. Salaries and benefits are $678,853,000, which is 1,955 or 0.3% greater than the 2018 budget. Materials and services um, are equal to 593,442, which is $567 or 0.1% greater than last year's or the, this current year's budget. A couple of things to note. Um, one that I'd just like to point out, street lights is $190,000. That's item number 6203002. There's no change, but it is, I always find it significant on how much we pay for lighting. Um, system maintenance of 6210010 includes an $11,000 increase for traffic paint, including torch down or stop bars. And I'm going to ask uh, Liza to explain what a torch down or stop bar is. So those are uh, the stop bars that you see at stop signs at intersections, and the torch down actually lasts much longer than the paint. Um, that we put down, and so it saves saves on labor, and they're more reflective. It's the rubbery looking stuff instead of the paint. The best example, the newest examples you can see are the tsunami uh, evacuation lines, the blue lines that are throughout the city. That's the torch down rubbery type of material. So it just it lasts longer in our weather. Do they have significant? Um they're accident prone, you know, if you're stopping on them, they have the same, the same, sure. they're fine like that. They have kind of a, a grit texture. texture I haven't on touched them, them yeah. Um, also uh, in uh, item number 6231080, sidewalk includes $100,000 for sidewalk improvements. This is the same as last year. This. Correct me if I'm wrong on it, but this is sidewalk repairs, not necessarily extension of sidewalks. Am I correct in that statement? Yeah. Uh, the extension of sidewalks gets into the street capital. And then finally, under the capital items, uh, one of th I wanted to mention this is item number 6330201. Uh, there's $50,000 for street lighting. That's LED upgrades. That's a program we've been involved with for a little bit, and I'm going to have Lila explain that a little bit. Um, that is our decorative lights, and we have agreements with um, Pacific Power and Light that we um, supply parts, and then they, and they'll install them. And so we have those in Taft. We have uh, many of the lights in Taft that um, have trouble working, and so the ballasts go out. The LEDs actually last longer, cost less, and so that's um, just replacement. We haven't replaced those for, you know, since Urban Renewal really put them in many years ago. Those were some of our first projects. 
So I think there's almost 100 lights in TAP. So that, that's one of our focuses. And we get many, many complaints about them being out. Headlights out. Well, do the new uh, lights that were installed for the D wayside, the, the new urban renewal part, are they LED? Yes. We started out with LED. Good. Um, with the sidewalk improvements, you know what? There wasn't any 2015, 2016 was a very small amount, and then the $100,000, you know, we used that. Where do you, how, how much more do you think is needed to improve to a, to where we wouldn't have to spend? Or, you know, obviously you don't want to budget more than what can be done, but what do you foresee improvement well, wise? You know, we did, we did that um, report at a council meeting ago. Um, showing all the sidewalk gaps on 101. And so, so these are improvement areas that um, have ADA access that aren't Neat. working well. And so, so that's part, part of this money. I don't recall, so sorry. Uh, no. It's my other. Yeah. I'm not sure you Question? did. Let me just make a follow-up on that okay. because I think there's a little bit of research I need to get back with you on that as I mentioned the sidewalk improvements under the street operations is for repair of sidewalks not yeah. extension of new ones right Lila's uh, presentation that she gave to the City Council was on the extension of sidewalks so we'll need to come back with some information about sidewalks that are <coughs> in disrepair but need to be improved yes Kelly Ron I I think that we had asked a couple of times about um, costs for connectivity. Costs for? Connectivity, connecting the sidewalks that are not connected at this point in time. Um, we are coming to that in just a minute as we get into the capital. Okay, um, any other questions on operations? Okay, sidewalk capital includes uh, the si street, ca I'm sorry, street capital includes the street capital fund, which is on page 39, um, the transportation development uh, fund, which is on page 41, storm drainage uh, uh, fund, which is on page 42, the Northwest Highway 101 improvement fund, which is on page 43, and the intersection improvement uh, uh, fund, which is on page 44. And I'll go through a list of those projects, but let me start off with a little bit on the sidewalks, uh, the cost of the extensions. Um, you'll notice on, in this, on page 39 of the street capital fund, it lists sidewalk funds of $757,000. That's sidewalk constructions. Um, I believe the question that Mr. Honbaum was asking is what's the total cost that we have and uh, what we need to do to you is to send you the maps and the PowerPoints that we put together for the City Council and presented to them two or three weeks ago. And that will give you the summary of all of the projects. And those are actually online on the LincolnCity.org under Public Works and so that whole presentation is there. What's included in the, in the 757? Let me get into that in just a second as soon as I find a note or write this note down. Okay. All right. Okay, the improvements that we are looking at. Okay, um, well, under the sidewalks, and again, this is item number 6340208. We have uh, $50,000 for ramps um, on Highway 101. Those are just approaches that need to be repaired. We have uh, $150,000. Uh, uh, that's included in this for the Northwest 21st parking uh, area and striping of that. 
We have $125,000 for various storm drain improvements, which would include the sidewalks for those on Northwest 22nd and Northwest Jetty. And then we have 432,000 for Northeast 14th from Highway 101 to Orr with sidewalk on the north side of the street. So Lila, do you wanna go over those a little bit more? Um, Northeast 14th is, that was one of the master plan projects and there's nowhere really to walk on that street on that north side and so it would, it would connect eventually to the Head to Bay Trail all the way on 22nd Street. So you go 14th, turns to West Devils Lake Road. And so this would get us as far as the, the top of the hill and allow folks a place to walk. That, that road's getting busier all the time. And there's, there's really almost no shoulder there at all. And so it would tie in from the highway all the way to the top of Orr. And then of course the goal would be to get past Spring Lake and, and around down to 22nd. Yeah. And so we're always looking also at grant money and any any um, thing out there like that we're pursuing. Um, this is, will be an ADA, those wider, like that's at Northeast 22nd Street, right? Is well, it that same style? One, this particular one will be probably just a normal sidewalk because of the restriction of, of room the there. Width. The width. There, there isn't much room. So it would be a normal type of sidewalk up to Orr and then down downhill probably Spring Lake on would be the wider sidewalk the the path combined path I, uh, I just you know we're, we're making sidewalks that stop at nothing you know just stopping and you know I've I've ridden my bike up that a few times and it's super steep and it's steep going down as well and same with Northeast 22nd Street to, to ride your bike down that is really I mean you're breaking the whole time and so you know where I think last year we were talking about you know the highway construction or highway you know the sidewalk along the highway and then we see you know you know the storm drain repair for what did you say a hundred for the hundred twenty five thousand dollars but it's not in storm drain construction you know and then we have fifty thousand dollars for ramp repair but it's not in sidewalk improvements and street operations and so with those two items alone you know um, if we have street sidewalk improvements for the ramps but it's not in sidewalk improvements and street operations and then the hundred twenty five thousand dollars in storm drains but it's not in storm drain construction yeah, and the second item listed, sorry, was 150000 for Northwest 21st parking lot. And um, we're, we're going a little bit out of order. So let me, let me jump back and I can, that one I can explain. Okay. Um, item number, now, so but let me just jump back. As you look at these projects, especially the sidewalk, uh, for the council, they have seen this. For the rest of you, we'll send this to you. I'll see if I can get this before we go home tonight. Take a look at all of the projects. If there are projects that you think are uh, more deserving to be done in the next year, um, that would be the that would be the time to make a motion and make a change on that because we have listed all of the projects. I think we do have the costs associated with those projects as well. So, if I can mention the ramps, um, there are sidewalk ramps, and we most of the funding is for improving the ramps, and the other part of it is paving those approaches. But whenever you do any paving, you have to do the sidewalk improvements. I might point out that the ramps mean the sidewalk ramps, not asphalt ramps. They are the, the wheelchair ramps. Okay, so when we talk about that, that's what we're meaning. Okay, so the first item we have under 6210009, Street Improvement Projects, is Northwest 21st Paving, Parking, Sidewalk, ADA, and Pavement Markings, um, we have $225,000, and then we mentioned the parking and the striping of an, an additional $150,000 earlier. So why don't you explain that project, Lana? Okay, so this is the, the one that we're replacing the sewer line in, and there's um, quite a bit of um, improvements that we need to make to the sidewalks, and that's the ADA portion of it that's down in sidewalk construction. And we have... Um, and then we're doing some pavement markings 
we're also doing um, extra parking on the south side of that street. So it's a wide street. People drive fairly fast on it. So there's quite a bit of, of sidewalk improvement that we're doing on that street as well. It's a long street. Is it the community center parking lot? Nope, this is on the west side. This is northwest, so it ties into Harbor. Oh, uh, the improvements Harbor. that we did on, on uh, Northwest Harbor. So this goes from the highway down to Harbor. So the, side, the sidewalk needs quite a bit of, of repair and improvement on that north side. And there is no sidewalk on the, on the south side where we're going to put the parking. The next item we have um, in this budget item is the high school drive from Southeast 48th to Highway 101, which includes, it's 3,500 feet, which includes sidewalk improvements for $224,000. Lila, do you want to explain that one? Yes, so that's, that we're looking at an improvement at the intersection of high school drive. Um, I know many of you have probably driven down that road. It's really difficult. Um, for buses and, and cars, and so we're going to improve the striping plan at the um, highway and improve the side, sidewalk that's there and then tie it in. It'll go past George Moreland Plumbing and meet up with the, um, the other sidewalk that's installed. And then we're also doing some paving there. You're going to put a sidewalk on the, s the, on the south side? On the south side. And then it's going to tie in to the one that goes down to the field? Yes, there's one in, well. Right where the crosswalk is at the elementary school? The pavement's really bad there, too. Is that Yes, that's included? part of the project. Yeah. Okay. At the risk of bringing in a totally unrelated question, because we we were wondering about ever having a traffic light. At, uh, I don't know who, who decides on putting a traffic light at High School Drive in 101. And that that would be something we'd have to pursue through ODOT. Is there ever any talk about that? That seems like the city doesn't own any street lights. Well, okay, well, but, but well, how well, how, 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 would, how would that happen? You know, we yeah. added one at 32nd. Mm -hmm. So if you add one at High School Drive, and then we have one at 48, you know, it's probably going to be getting back traffic up. And so we're trying to improve that we would be improving actually the turning lane coming off of off of 101 and around that corner. So those are the types of improvements that we're looking at at that intersection. Are you going to widen that intersection? And widen the we're, we're going to improve it. I don't know how much wider it will get, but we, you know, the way the sidewalk was put in on the highway, it, it doesn't flow to the other sidewalk on the north side. So we have a, a nice plan for that, and I can put it. I can put our plan up on our website too, so you can take a look at it. It'll have all the flavor <coughs> of a regular sidewalk, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that. Mr. Chair, if I might, um, one thing that concerns me when we talk about sidewalks is the same concern I had when we were talking about the uh, transportation plan for the city walking and biking, but biking in particular. And I think my biggest objection when we were talking about dedicating money uh, to an effort to bikes was, in my mind, it's, it's two things to look at. One is transportation, one is recreation. And for me, any sidewalk improvement should be um, uh, prioritized that way. How, uh, do we need these to get people to work, to school, uh, to shopping, as opposed to, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to have a nice walk in the woods? Um, that's where my priority would go with these. To me, this particular one is, you know, it's a absolutely. safe route to schools. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's Mr. Mayor, on Lila? We're going to switch seats, and I'm going to have Lila bring up her presentation so you can see what it is that we've been <laughs> Costs a lot of money. And 
yet the culinary center has not provided us a platter to enjoy, you know. <laughs> I like it. Octopus? Are you logged in? Are you logged in with you? <sighs> but that's like ones. eating puppies. Little, little back to the main They're so... <laughs> can't do that. Man, I wish. <laughs> I was on a fun and heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> While we're in an interlude, I want to say I, I, I walked up to the new uh, sidewalk up by the Bay House, um, and it was beautiful. Yeah, it was very, very nice. Gives a very nice uh, view out to the Bay. Uh, let's take a five-minute break while Lila gets that uh, going for us. Okay. Well, I was. <laughs>
On record. On record. I'm still not on. How about now? No? Is it up? The other up. The opposite of down up. You have to turn it first. On like record. On record. No. Still not. Hello. The other on button, Nancy. How high do you want to up, Kevin? I have a black line. All One more. That should be there. Are we on? <laughs> yes, uh, we're on. Do we have a thumbs On up? record. Yeah. I don't know. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. I don't. I'm not hearing anything. Test, test. Testing. Testing. Okay. All right. All right, Lila. Okay. So this is our. This was a presentation we gave um, a couple weeks ago, and it's our Highway 101 sidewalk gaps, and there are ten total projects. You can't see the screen very well, but I'll I'll move on to the other ones. But a total of 4.12 million um, is what we're estimating would take care of all the sidewalk gaps on Highway 101. And so this first one um, goes from West Devils Lake Road to Logan. And we're as the cost estimate of this one, and this is sidewalk. Yeah, um, both sides. Anyway, so this is sidewalk apparently on both sides that, at 2,300 feet. And then we do have some retaining walls that would be, would be needed. And then, yeah. Okay, and then this one goes from... Um, Motel 6, Mojo Coffee on the west side, um, length of about 100 feet, and that's 50,000. On the east side, from Taco Bell to Holmes Road is about 2,000 feet. That's 670,000. Um, this one's on the east side of Holmes Road to Northwest 25th Street, and we have um, many people walking along this section. It's um, 1,660 feet, uh, estimate of 550,000. And then we have the west side um, from Game Over to the Blackfish Cafe, about 200 feet missing there, and that's 100,000. And then we have Southeast 14th, North Lincoln Sanitary, about 350 feet, and that's 100,000. And then we have Southeast 19th to Southeast 23rd on both sides, um, no sidewalk on either side, and this is, a, is real narrow. And if this project was done, it would um, tie in to the ODOT um, project that we did through Nell Scott. And so 400,000 for the east side, 500,000 for the west side. And we have um, approached ODOT um, STIP funding for this probably three or four times, trying to get at least that um, east side uh, finished up. And so to, to no avail at this point, but we, we keep trying. And then this is Southeast 32nd um, High School Drive on the east side, which wasn't completed during the um, Nelscott project. And so I actually had residents calling from Southeast Dune today saying, why didn't they finish the sidewalk along that side, you know, during the project? And it was a funding issue was the main, main reason. But, you know, people aren't, they're not happy about not having that sidewalk in place. And then Southwest 35th, um, on the west side from in its Spanish head or close to that um, about 1,600 feet and that's 600,000 and the high school drive one was estimated at 400,000 and then we went on to the Head to Bay Trail um, proposed areas um, the dark purple is the trail that's finished and then Mr. Chair, uh, this is typically an ODOT uh, expenditure, and yeah, if, if, if they won't do it, we'll pay for it. Is that well, how it works? The Nell Scott project was a STIP project, and so that was um, paid by ODOT, and then we have to take over the maintenance of the storm and the water or and the um, sidewalk projects. You know, when we do those agreements with them, now it belongs to us to maintain. But typically, we get grants from ODOT. We go and apply for grants um, 
you know, along with all of these other cities that are trying to get money for these sidewalk projects. And so they they do pay for it, but you have to you have to pursue it. You so other otherwise, no, they don't just come and do the sidewalks for us. <laughs> Um, and I, I missed it. Did you show the one that's next scheduled, the uh, West Levels Lake, to the? Uh, is that mm -hmm. coming up? I uh, think that office? one's. I think that one's coming up yet. I, I was showing West Devils Lake Road to right, Logan, the, the one way. that you've talked about before. But I think that that would be a good example to answer Dee's question of, yes. of the three-way partnership in that. Right. That one to right. get it done. And I think so that I think that one's coming. Up share here questions in the before we move head on. Head to Bay Trail. Yes, so is the 4.2 million for those proposed sidewalks, does that then give sidewalks on both sides of the highway all the way down, or is it both sides yes. in some places and one side on the other? It, it was both sides. So We, we were showing the entire gaps. On so the that highway. would give entire, all the way down the middle of the city, we'd have sidewalks on both sides of the highway for 4.25. 12? Is that what you said? 4.25. Four. It? it was 4 million. Oh, what was 12? million said 4.12 oh maybe that's 4.12 right. okay thanks <laughs> before <laughs> Lila jumps into the next the next two sections that you're going to see actually reflect the philosophy of what we're trying to accomplish with the sidewalks there's two parts to it one is the completion of the head to bay trail and then the other part is looking at where the foot traffic is and put, put in the sidewalks in based upon where we see the foot traffic um, and not just anywhere in, in the community yeah, so, so the dark green here is actual sidewalks that are installed, and the purple is the Head to Bay Trail that's installed, and the dash lines are our proposed areas. And so these are showing um, paths along Logan Road. And I'm not going to get into all the detail here, but um, the black shows existing sidewalk, and then the dashed green is, is proposed sidewalk. And then this is Northwest 39th, and then on down through Jetty. This one is Northeast 36th Drive from West Devils Lake Road to the one to 101. And this one is Northeast Holmes Road. And and none of these are included in that 4.12 million. Th this is separate from that. These are on our side streets. And so we have Northwest Jetty, Keel, Northeast 14th, and that one um, is in the budget looking at uh, the Northeast 14th section. Northeast 14th from where to where? From 101 to Orr, and that is on the north side of the street. And then we have Northeast Sixth Drive, and that's part of the the Head to Bay sidewalk project. And so all of these are just they're good connectors. Southeast Third, going from uh, Tide Avenue to 101. And then we had um, North, Southeast Neptune Avenue. And this project is uh, Southwest Anchor Avenue. And this one's this one's pretty difficult to do because the road is so narrow. The travel lanes are probably a little bit less than nine feet wide. And Southeast 51st Street. And this one's the proposed um, Head to Bay Trail, Regatta Park to Northeast 22nd. And 22nd, you can see the the existing Head to Bay Trail. It's in the dark purple in our proposed proposed area. Lila, is the proposed area sidewalk or is the proposed area it, trail a, off the road? It's a or path. What is that? It's a path? Yeah, off similar the to the, the eight-foot path that we already have. Thank you. And then this one's Mass to Regatta Park. So actually, it's or to regatta, but 
we're going down a side street there too. And then we have first Southwest Ninth Street. Mr. Chair, yes. Layla, is there any uh, plans, long-term plans perhaps to have some kind of sidewalk or something that goes from Ninth Southwest down to the beach access where the park is? There's a lot of foot traffic on that road. You know, I it's, think it's, it's pretty nasty. We've um, come up with many options for that, and they're all very, very expensive. I've looked at grants. You know, we've looked at um, doing um, one of the kind of the swinging type bridge mm -hmm. things. Um, I've looked at, you know, possibly getting part of a just a trailhead, not necessarily a sidewalk. But it's really difficult because it drops off so much on that on that south side. But we have, we just keep trying to to look at that and look for funding for it. So it's it's not off our radar. <laughs> And then this one's Southwest Ninth, Ninth to Coast. So. And uh, Southwest 24th Street to Southwest 35th. So that's the other part of Coast. We did actually have, we have that designed. And then Southwest 35th to 51st Street. And then this is our projects. Um, these are actually our paving projects um, and what's been paved 2017-18 and then our proposed up to 2020-2021. So that's what you're seeing in this, this list of projects that we have. 2018-19. Chair, yes. um, Lila, is there anything from 101, like from the McDonald's to West Devils Lake Road? Um, and that would be the Northeast 36th. So it's not necessarily. So oh, you're okay. I'm that was this that was way. the very first project on the highway. You're speaking. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then anything further going down to the Niatsu Post Office? Yes, we have okay. a project. I'm not sure. I, I thought maybe I had a picture of it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we do have a project that we're we're teaming up with. We went for an ODOT grant, and so we we've, we've received the grant. Um, and the um, Sluts Tribe is partnering with that and, and putting in funding toward it. That's part of the reason that the project um, was awarded. And so, and then the city, the North Highway 101 funds, we were going to use some of that to improve West Devils Lake Road intersection on 101. And that money has always been pretty much earmarked for that intersection. And so that would be part of the matching funds from the city. And then we'd manage the project and do the design of the project, which we have a preliminary design. So from West Devils Lake Road on 101 on the east side to close to Niatsu intersection. We didn't, I don't think we'll quite make it with the funding that we have all the way to that intersection, but we'll get close. And so it'll give people a, a place to walk into the city from Niatsu area, from Otis. Well, that's just because, I mean, you had a second death there just, you know, not even a month ago. Yeah. And, so the, and this isn't quite in that area, but, you know, every every sidewalk helps on 101. And it would be, there would probably be a um, little bit of a boardwalk section on that as well. And so that one's, um, they're talking to me about the agreement right now. So we would be seeing that. I, I would imagine by the time it got through all the permitting, um, probably in a, a year Chair, question. Well, I love the, all the projects you've shown us, which are, are many. Why why did we settle on the Northeast 14th to 101 in this year's budget? That was one of the um, top priorities in our master plan and our transportation master plan and that, that grouping and trying to finish off the West Devils Lake Road um, section. So it goes from 101 all the way to um, Highway 101. And it's narrow. It's not not a safe place to walk. So that was that was why that one raised raised to the top. And then these are just uh, our street improvement projects, which are in this list. So there's the um, Northwest 22nd, where we have quite a bit of um, sidewalk that we're 
we're adding and storm that we're adding at the far end. And northeast, these are asphalt overlays. This is northeast Port Lane, which has been awarded. So these are all projects that are that are essentially under underway. And then also Southwest 29th was in last year's budget, and we rolled it over to to this year. So that's. Um, Com well, it's almost completely designed. It's been surveyed and it's ready to go. And 68th is um, already bid and will be paved in the near future along with Northeast um, 69th Street. And those both have quite a bit of drainage work in them as well. And then these are the highway approaches that, that we've been talking about. And as long as we can get through the ODOT permitting Part of this, we'll, we would get these done. There are five of them in Ocean Lake, and they're unravel. Essentially, the asphalt's unraveling, and the and the sidewalk ramps, um, the concrete sidewalk ramps need to be updated. Has there been talk about removing some of those <coughs> sidewalks where they're not streetlights, to just remove the ones that are not at the streetlight crossings? Oh, some of the, oh, re just removing the crosswalk altogether. Correct. I mean, because it. As there, there have been, <coughs> you know, probably a dozen different studies on that over the years. Mm -hmm. Because I, what sticks in my mind is that the the amount of space that's supposed to be in front of and behind the sidewalks, we're not, we don't have it, and so when you have cars parked on there, you know, you find yourself stopping very abruptly, or just going through, which you don't want to do either. So you know. What sticks is you know those th that are not at sidewalks, at intersections. Light, thank you. That are not at intersections, the yellow painted area is not sufficient to ODOT standards, or is it? And yeah. you know how to. It, I mean, it we was. have deaths all the time on 101. I mean all the and it's just sickening. So how can we? We met we met ODOT's requirement on. <laughs> On painting those out as far as um, we could without, you know, eliminating all the parking on 101, and that's essentially what you'd have to do for that vision. Or we were we were also looking at um, <coughs> doing RFBs, the rapid flashing beacons, like at Starbucks, at, at through that section too. But it's already just there's so so much going on there that there's really not room for those. You'd actually have to have the big arm. Type light. So Starbucks light also had death. I mean, you have had. Well, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. So, and we've we've had um, a group of students from OSU do a report. So, we have all kinds of studies in Ocean Lake. I look on the, the um, account number here uh, under. You know, street capital for street overlay projects is a 987. It, is that the total uh, for this this coming year's uh, overlays? So that'll yes, yes. There, there's none buried any other place. I mean, no, I'm, it'll all be in capital in here. It, it, it is all there. Okay. So the, <coughs> the question, Ron, I, I had was, you know, is this 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 looks like, you know, if we look back oh, after our last budget, 11 million we were going crazy with overlay last year but only 450 got done so in essence we're rolling 700 roughly into this budget and only adding you know a couple hundred mm -hmm. my question is given our miles of asphalt in this town and you've shown us council anyway aged an aging report <coughs> with a 20 25 year life you know, the, the question is, how much do we need to, should we be overlaying per year and some some kind of a, an average cost? So, Right, we have that in the budget message. We estimated that that would be somewhere around four, somewhere around $400,000 a year so that each street would be overlaid uh, over a 20 year period. Okay. And so, so and a few of these rolled over because of right. various things. But well, but yeah. we hit our average. We hit mm -hmm. enough there at the 450. Yeah. And that's, I guess I, I say this because often we hear streets as a, an issue, 
and a concern about not doing the job on it. And I think this clearly states that we're over and above. You know, if we did it every year, you know, would would beat the life of the asphalt, and then would be questioned about doing it too early. So, right. I just I and, and point out the math. We are looking at um, different asphalt types and uh, thinner overlays on streets that you know aren't quite as bad just to um, prolong that life of the street. Great. So stretching the money as far as we can. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Lila, regarding asphalt, we all the asphalt we use we use comes in from Newport, is that correct? Yes. And is heat retention an issue? No, and that's, you know, that's one of the reasons we didn't do Southeast 19th Street because it got too late in the year, the temperature, you know, wasn't wasn't correct, but they get the asphalt here and it's tested, you know, the temperature's tested. So we don't accept it if it's if it's not. Thank you. Yes, Kevin. Lila, we, you, again, back to the, the projects, the 4.12 million for the sidewalks. Uh, as we know, prices of everything is going up. Do you have, can you give a, like a ballpark estimate on what that has gone up? Those same projects would have cost, say, a year ago or two years ago projecting two years from now we know they need to be done two years from now that those projects are going to cost us what Est I, I recognize it's a ballpark but right you could you could probably add a five hundred thousand a year and, and increase costs okay thank you and I, I don't need to go through all of these we've already kind of talked about those so that kind of gets us to yeah. streets um, are there any other questions that you have as far as street operation or capital thank you Lila you bet is this on the web somewhere yeah right on the front it is the whole the whole thing it's under public there's a little orange cone on the front of the city website if you go to that the presentations under it so the thing that to do on this is you have in the budget message uh, the projects that we want to do uh, the explanation as to why, and you've heard some of that tonight, is you look at this uh, master plan of projects and you feel that the, there is something that should have a greater priority. Um, um, let us know that but this would be the time to make those motions to switch the process. You know, the amount that we budgeted to spend. Uh, the projects are the things that the staff is recommending. Um, they certainly can be changed if the budget committee decide different project had greater priority. <clears throat> that moves us to parks M maintenance. Uh, I'll just say parks, which we will begin on Page 45 of the budget. Uh, parks, um, like the uh, streets and the sewer. Um, does anybody want me to bring back up the octopus <coughs> with those numbers or just leave it as is? Okay. Um, The parks, uh, the parks um, budgets or budget includes both operational maintenance, um, which is the parks maintenance fund, and capital funds, as did the water, sewer, and street. We're going to begin with the <coughs> parks maintenance fund, which again is page 45. The total resources are um, $2,035,799. Uh, which is $211,000 and $11,912 less than last year. Uh, this is primarily due to a decrease in the beginning fund balance, which was 240778 It's also important to note, as we mentioned with streets, 
that the TRT uh, revenue uh, constitutes 91% of the total operating revenue for our parks, which is $1,162,662. Okay. Um, Total operating expenditures is $1,480,684, which is $297,914, or 34.1% less than the 2018 budget. Okay. Under salaries and benefits, um, it's equal to $781,031 which is $53,143 or 7.3% greater. Uh, some of the reasons for that is that workers' compensation is running about 35% higher, $9,000. Medical and dental is running $14,000 higher, which is 12.35%. That reflects both a change in the status of a, of a worker and a change from um, individual to family uh, insurance plus the costs associated with the increases we're anticipating. And then retirement is also running about 10% higher or $10,000 higher which is 15%. Again for the same reason as the dental you had some changes in the employee status of some people that have brought them into the eligibility for the retirement and then of course the retirement is we have budgeted for that to increase um, by 10%. Under materials and services, it is $420,000, $420,853, which is $355,907 less or 46.9% less than the 2018 budget. A few items to point out. Um, the first is in the area of contracted services. Uh, there's three things that I want to mention on that. In this year's budget, we had, we had contracted with Career Tech uh, for $40,000 for some projects and maintenance that they um, have been working on. This has been cut back this year to $20,000. In addition, uh, Jeannie Sprague has been working on a, a change in the way we are monitoring that in that it'll be more of an hourly expense rather than, uh, than a lump sum payment. Uh, that contracted service is also $10,000 less because the eclipse already took place and we don't have to buy rent porta potties for an eclipse anymore. Um, and then $2,000 less for some survey work. Um, miscellaneous permits, which is item number 6202099 is less 13,520. And then item number 6202101 is less in that uh, we had anticipated adding computers into the parks maintenance shop. Uh, we don't need to do that. We're looking at a different route and so it doesn't include that in it. And then under the 6210010, which is system maintenance, I'm going to just review some of the projects that we have in there. Um, I'll try to get some of the bigger ones. Um, this includes a playground remodel of $50,000. I believe that's Regatta Park, is it not? We're looking at Kids Park, and we could look at Regatta also, Kids Park. Kids Park, yes. okay, thank you. Um, you know, do you have that page up? Yes, I do. You better go through those. Okay. Uh, for the playground remodel, that, that can vary due to public input, city council and parks and recreation board input. We are looking at Kids <coughs> Park right now. There are some improvements that need to be made. Uh, the shelter area, which you've seen is a little roof there, needs to be uh, risen so that uh, our vehicles can get in to do more maintenance into the playground area. This is it's, Cutler City. What'd you say? This is Cutler City. It is Cutler City, yes. Thanks. And um, also so that it's just a little bit higher. It's kind of low, and if you're a tall person, you could hit your head on it. So we're looking at that. Um, also, the court floods, and we're looking to fix that in the fence area. And um, we are also looking at the, the park, the playground at Regatta Park. So it's a very fluid item right there, but we do have some ideas. Joe Miller, our park supervisor, went out last week and did a playground inspection on all the parks, on all the playgrounds. They did pass inspection, but some of them do need some improvements. Um, let's see. Uh, 
other ones Jeannie, were, yes. You're, you're referring to the wooden structure. The wooden structure yeah. in Regatta, yes. yes. Not the brand new stuff. No, that's okay. fantastic, yes. <laughs> Uh, we are looking at garbage uh, can replacement up and down Highway 101. We've had those concrete ones out there for quite some time that um, we would like to make more attractive and more weather resistant. So uh, we're taking that on. Is there any any desire to put <coughs> excuse me recycling anywhere? No. Or you know we I could. I saw in a video. Forgive me for my Facebooking, but. Uh, there is a tray in some country that they have on the outside of the garbage can right. that people can put their cans and things on the tray so that people collecting the bottles don't have to dig in it. Right. So I it will look be into interesting that, to see because yeah. we all know there's people collecting those things. So right. And rather than digging through the trash to get to them. It'd be right there on the side. Right. So. So we do have some ideas. We worked with Lila. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. If I could yes. Just, yeah. um, I, I like that idea, but I would caution against trays because of wind. Okay. With baskets and such. Okay. Yeah. So, Maybe so we can bring a few models out to you all to take okay. a look at. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we worked with Lila and Joe Miller to have some ideas set up for next fiscal year when we can start that process. Beautify. Beautify the area. Uh, other ones we're looking at are uh, just maintenance supplies, continuing with the improvements in, in Kurtzis Park, which is a really hot spot for, for our residents now with our youth league going on there and uh, continuing making that park be a standout. Other ones we're working on are um, Regatta Park. We're putting a rubber wheel stop replacement on the curbs there. Uh, we also put money in there for striping parking lots about it for system maintenance, the major projects. Chair? Yes, sir. I just noticed that the line item above that goes to the building maintenance goes to zero. How's that happen? Line item building maintenance. Six two one zero 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 one. Six two one zero zero zero. Oh, understood. Okay, so I actually moved the restrooms refurbished, which I had, ha which was under build maintenance prior. We have now moved that over to park improvements. Yes. So we took out thirty thousand from that, the restroom and playground, and put it into an actual park improvement instead of a building maintenance. It, Chair. Yes. Um, Ron, you probably answer this. Is the uh, uh, the wayside in, included in this, or is this going to be in VCB? Um, that's VCB. Yeah. The uh, the it's not included in this. A um, visitor center would be included in VCB. Okay, but we're not taking over any maintenance at this point. Uh, it would probably got a few more months before they make the final approval, so we did not include it in this budget. <clears throat> so if we were to want, if there was a need to further improve this place structures, and that it's you know the 173. If there was a need, would we need to? I know you said you're going to get back to the quantity of items needed to fix the parks. Mm -hmm. Would it be contingent on that, or I mean, is that something that we needed to vote on, or? Well, yes, it would be something you would need to vote to change, and that would be to shift money um, into parks maintenance, probably into the capital area for or the systems, systems maintenance. maintenance. Okay. Or improvements, and then pull it somewhere out of somewhere else. Sure, but I just—that's the place. That is the place. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, oh. Susan. Um, I'm looking for money to go towards the removal of the deed restriction on Regatta Park. Would that be in this? There's been two parts uh, where that is included in the memo that I gave you on possible changes. Um, one, one has been to include it out of this fund, the park maintenance fund. One has been to include it out of the legal fund. And one has been to include it out of the VCB fund. And so those are accounted in that, in that one, in that form This there, so. memo we just got tonight? Yes, sir. Oh, could, it be, uh, could it be divvied between the three? 
Or would you rather uh, it be it's what? Not, it's <laughs> look not, at Debbie. <laughs> 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 Don't look at Debbie. You Wait. could, but it's not. It's not. It's Don't not a big that. enough amount to worry about. I just pick one. Yeah. Chair. Uh, yes. Last last year, uh, if I remember rightly, when we did the budget for system maintenance, we had budgeted for upgrading the equipment in Cutler City in the park in Cutler City, and budgeted yes. to uh, add bathrooms. And that clearly didn't happen. So what happened to that money? Okay. And then we end up with a total ending fund balance of $753,000. What happens to that money? What's that money doing? So two questions there. Right. So the first one, the Cutler City Park uh, Equipment and Fall Protection did get moved to provide funding for the Regatta Park retaining wall, and that was per City Council resolution mm -hmm. earlier this year. And what was your second <coughs> question? I think Debbie can answer this. The 750000 estimated ending fund balance rolls over into the beginning fund balance for this 18-19 uh, year and is available for appropriation. Um, this is an individual fund, so the money doesn't go elsewhere unless we transfer it. Yes, Dick. Um, I noticed up above and on page uh, 47, the uh, timber harvest expenses I'm assuming the earlier zeros is because it was open space and we brought it into parks. Yes. yes. Sir. And so um, would this indicate then that we have thinking of some thinning in some of the open space for this coming year? Yeah. I, I believe so, Councillor. One of the ones is we've been, I've had contact with Mark Miller who did thinning in some of our open spaces, including Agnes and Wildwood area. And if we were looking at the Southeast Third and Keel, if that's decided on and that's still up in the air, that area would need thinning to happen. Also, we're looking behind Kurtz's Park to deal, uh, to work with some concerns there about um, cleanup issues because we, every year are now paying out more money to go in and do a cleanup. And um, after meeting with those companies, they have some really great ideas of how we could be proactive and rather than just cleaning up every year. So two examples of where we might do it. Okay, good, thanks. So I have a question, yes, Deanna. Thank you. Um, I just have a question about um, adequate funding for vegetation. So before you get out of that chair, could you help me with that? Definitely, are you looking at the plant purchases that we? Um, yeah, I just wanna make way. sure that it's adequate. I haven't added up all the acreage of of open space and well parks and right. um, so I don't know if that's adequate that's all thank you for asking that so we did put in we did go up a thousand dollars from four thousand to five thousand for plant purchases this year Ooh. Um, <laughs> it's not I know it's not a lot luckily I, I came into the system where Lila and Joe had already worked together to work with some nonprofits to be able to get funding where we can buy tree seedlings and plants for a dollar a so we, we, for example, just got 800 new trees and plants to put into some of our open spaces. That's kind of unheard of. They usually go for $20 a pop. So if I can continue that relationship, what they're very willing to do with us, I don't think I have to take it too much out of our budget. Okay, thank you. Um, I just see fertilizers, and if, you know, lots of kids like to roll at Regatta Park, and that's yes. all healthy kind of fertilizers and safe for all that. Kind it of is. Stuff. Our staff go to uh, training every year where they get read up. We only have two to three staff that are certified in it. They're the only ones that are allowed to apply it. One of those is Joe Miller. Um, very safe and we don't do it around playground areas. This is mostly to combat invasive species oh, okay. like scotch broom. Um, so we, uh, I, I don't, I, I can look at it, counselor. I don't know of any playgrounds that we do it in because they keep them so well maintained. Anyways, there's no there's it. no real weeds, but open spaces we do focus on. Sure. Just I just picture, you know, we got a, yeah. the, the wall there. <laughs> I agree. Um, if you now look at item number 6330301 under capital for park improvements, we have budgeted $245,000. I want to mention just some of these projects. Uh, this includes $80,000 for pocket parks, again. Uh, in our budget, that's proposal to either use to purchase property that can become a park, a park or to, or to uh, uh, create a pocket park out of property we may already own. Um, it's just, right now it's just fluid in that it says pocket parks. Um, the second is the Southeast Third and Kill 
uh, or the Taft New Park. We have budgeted $100,000 uh, for improvements in that. Uh, the city has been pursuing uh, the purchase of the Taft property. That still looks like it's a go. Um, we have some funding all that came to us in a bequeath that is available to us. We proposed an additional $100,000 to that. I also should point out that Councilor Hinton has also proposed in her uh, list of items on the $945,000, uh, $500,000 for that park uh, improvements as well. And then it includes $30,000 for signs, interpretive, trail parking, et cetera. Um, uh, Jeannie, why don't you explain that one a little bit Great. More? That's a very important project for us next year, and it's something I've heard from community members since I first started here last November. And that's simply to have correct signage and interpretive um, signs at our open spaces and develop parks. Um, Cutler City is a great example of where it was started there. They had some great signage. It's, it's uh, deteriorated quite a bit now, but that's along the process that I'm looking at. It does cost a little bit of money. I know that looks like a large lump sum. I am working with grants to be able to continue with it. You'll see a, a newspaper article about Career Tech helping us out with some signage. We are thinking outside the box to be able to do this, but we want people <coughs> to be able to go safely into our parks and open spaces, know where they are, be able to follow a trail system, and um, be safe. So. So perhaps an app would take care of that too. Huh? You know, I heard you say that before. I'm, I am. I keep at saying that. it till somebody yeah. agrees with me. But yeah. <laughs> we can always link them together too. Okay, there you go. I got Deanna on this. We're done. Oh. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, Western. sir. Um, why does parks need a reserve of a hundred and hundred eleven thousand dollars? Isn't is that the gift for Taft? Is that the? I have a more general question what, what about reserves in general, but uh, what page? that's account 6370400 on page 48. Okay, um, one would, comment on this. Why it, wouldn't that be transferred back to the general fund or something for other use until it's needed? Because these are system development charges and there's limitations on how you can spend it. It has to be for capacity expansion projects. Fortunately, a lot of our revenues have restrictions, so. Um, and that brings us to the other two capital funds that we have. Um, the first one is on page uh, 50, or I'm sorry, the first one's on page 48, which we were just talking about. Uh, that includes a $400,000 uh, for the purchase of the Taft Park property. If, with, if I may, that if if that goes through, you know, now it's used as like a soccer practice and baseball practice and things like that, and so there's been some concern with you know, if we purchase it and if we, you know, do these things so that people have, would, you know, want to know because a couple weekends ago the baseball fields were closed and there wasn't anywhere to practice. And so that was really the only place for people to practice their teams. And so, you know, there's some concern there that by purchasing it, that, that opportunity goes away. So um, we can bring back to you a preliminary design that we have for that park. Right. I, I mean, construction, right. You can't play with what's going on. But then after the fact, is it still going to be open to do those things like that, you know, so. So your question is, what might go in there? What would the park look like there? Sh sure. And would there still be that opportunity to have practices and, you know, those kinds of things? Because, yeah. you know, so it is a we, we do have a preliminary design yeah. that we can bring back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Chair, because that yes. was my concern when we talked about the uh, cultural center and the elimination of that little field, too, and kind of goes to my concern about parks in general, that they become uh, playground equipment heavy instead of just an open field where it can be used for other purposes such as this. Chair, yes. what is the time frame <coughs> for buying this property from the school? Uh, we are hoping to have that. Uh, there's two parts to it. We were actually were hoping to have that completed. However, there's been uh, part of the property is where the buses have been parked. Mm -hmm. And so there's been uh, issues that we have had to deal with the Department of Environmental Quality on soils testing. They are in the process of completing their final soils testing. Uh, we are hoping that uh, we'll have this go through over the next about three months as they finish it up. So if the soil testing comes back where it's not usable, then what are you going to do? 
the discussions that we've had with them is only buying the portion of the park that we can use until such time as that can receive a no further action notice is needed uh, on on cleanup thank you but if I can in all fairness DEQ has been already over that and that isn't going to come back as that kind of report no. because early reports show it is less invasive than what was that yeah. we, we are anticipating that no further action notice will come from, will will come from DEQ on this so um, the schools districts positive we're pretty positive that uh, we can wrap this up yeah. um, over the next two to three months mr. chair yes um, do you I beat you <laughs> before Jeannie leaves um, we had um, talked about uh, um, a community service program and we I think we ended up to the point where we didn't have the staff available to do it but I was just wondering if um, the staff that it would take to um, manage this program from bottom to the top however many people that would be um, did we decide that it was an effort that we don't want to undertake and then I'll quit asking that's a, that's a presentation we still have to give to you which is on I believe it's at the next City yeah, Council I think it's meeting. on the 14th yeah I think so is there a budget implication I mean do we there could be um, that's part of the reason why we wanted to get it to you before our final meeting okay so options. I should hold that question then perhaps <laughs> that one might be. okay Yes. Well, she's saying no. Go Madam ahead. Councilwoman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question was about the um, 6330401 Taft Sports Park. Is that the bequeathment or is that money we've budgeted? Those are system development charges. They are not. Um, the, the money that was bequeathed is in the um, Parks Playground Fund, which is the next fund after. Oh, okay and that is listed it we have a reserve for future years of five hundred twenty seven thousand one hundred seventy dollars and the largest portion of that comes from that uh, uh, that gift thanks chair yes sir Debbie would uh, back to the um, reserve futures for the capital expansion the one hundred eleven nine fifty nine under six three seven zero four zero zero would the uh, head to bay trail investing in that qualify as as expansion um, when the SDCs are created there's a there's a study that's done and a, and a long-term capital plan and the fee is based on that plan so it can fund whatever is on that plan I'm not sure if the head to bay trail is on that or not I would have to I'd have to would you, would you check for me yes absolutely mr. chair yes sir I, I think it's been reported I don't know where I remember seeing it that the city might be in the process of acquiring the D River State Park. That is, is that correct. True? Yeah. It is correct. Is, is, uh, is, that, is there any costs associated with that or budgetary impact associated with that? Not in. And the, is that included in this budget? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Okay. Um, so yes, we are in the process of approving it. We have recently gave a pre presentation. I. I uh, told Jeannie it was the presentation of her lifetime and she rose to the challenge and did an outstanding job where we presented to the state uh, parks board and they received it favorably and so uh, we are expecting a positive outcome but it probably will take several months five or six months before the state actually acts on it so because of that we are not anticipating putting any funds in this budget for uh, for the, the maintenance or for any improvements. Now, having said that, um, when we get to the VCB budget, you'll note that uh, it has a pretty healthy fund balance, or, and uh, um, we wanted to protect a portion of that to be used as a visitor center for the reconstruction of the bathrooms in a visitor center. And so, in the unreserved or the unappropriated fund balance, it includes seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the that is we're holding for that improvement on that uh, on that park, but we're not anticipating we'll we'll do any improvements this fiscal year. Mr. Chair, yes, sir. Ms. Brig, um, I was looking at revenue 
And, you know, I, I saw kind of a, a normal token, you know, line item called grants. And, you know, I, I was expecting with a new parks director that we'd see um, a lot more budgeted for this next fiscal year. Is, is this a surprise? You're holding back on us, or you know? <laughs> I hope not. Um, after the compliment you just got of your dance party with uh, the state, I'm. <laughs> um, we? I focus on grants weekly, and I'd be happy to share with you all the the list that I've uh, been working on. It is a focus of mine. Uh, may have lowballed it so that it's a success when I present it, but <laughs> 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 but I do. It, so. um, I do plan, I, I mean, I, I have a goal of a certain amount that I want to get every year when I'm in this position, so. So what you're saying is I should give you a pass and just go with this this year and you'll surprise us at ne this time next year at the, the actual. I hope to happily surprise you, yes, with the actual of it. Can you show I me hope? where that, that? We will. <laughs> Thank you. Right near the top. Okay. Um, other questions regarding parks, uh, either capital or operations? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Ms. Sprague. Yes. Is there a budget for public restrooms, which I understand are being trashed on a regular basis? Thank you for asking. So we do, and that is under one of our park improvements, is to work on two of the, the restrooms. Um, I can tell you exactly which two those are for next year. New roofs doing some new structuring to them and that is the restrooms on 15th at northwest 15th yes uh and 50th we're going to refurbish the wood and roof and work on that quite a bit as for the other bathrooms um i believe my maintenance staff uh do a good job in keeping up with the usage of the bathrooms and what uh, with the usage of them basically it is a priority of them they do a thing every day called a run where their focus is cleaning out every one of those bathrooms uh, they deal with things that we don't always think about and are cleaning it up every day and I uh, I know it is a strong focus of them to be able to maintain them to be healthy and usable by our citizens that said if there's any concerns please send them my way or Joe Miller's way that's how we get a lot of things done. If we've done the run already for the day, which we usually do by 12 or 1 in the afternoon, and something happens that afternoon or evening, you let us know, and then we can go in and take care of that because we have people working through the evening also. When do we lock the, back, the restrooms up we at, in the For evening? the summertime, we close them at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, in the wintertime. And time. Open, open them? Uh, we open them. Our staff start at 7.30 in the morning, so they start the run after that and slowly go from the south to the north, <coughs> starting to open them. So. Do we have people ripping mirrors off the wall and spreading feces on the wall, and are you finding needles? Uh, is that still an issue? Vandalism does occur. We do have some uh, bodily fluids and situations that we have to clean up, yes, but we protect ourselves and are very careful with how we do the... I don't, think it's, I don't think it's happening to the extent that we saw a few years ago. A couple of practices that we changed. Um, we have been using security to come and lock them up at night. And uh, they not only lock them up, but they also do a check and send us a report on it. So we have not had, as it, it will always be an issue, but we've not had it as much as we've had in the past. And please. if they do see an issue at night, they contact the police immediately, and then Joe Miller and I get a report by 6 a.m. the next morning. Yeah, please, please thank your workers for uh, for dealing with this. Thank you. Thank you. A few things while we're on the bathroom thing. Yes. I've been in other cities where there's actually a number to call where it says, you know, if you find something out of out of something, please call us and let right. us know because we want to come and take care of that. Ideally, you are in service when people are in there, so it's not like they're going to be calling you at two in the morning. Right. The second thing is, is, why don't we have any soap in the bathrooms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, for real. I mean, right. come on. I, There's I, no I, soap in the public restrooms anywhere in town. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, counselor. I, I can tell you from past experience in another city with the reason why we didn't have soap, but I need to find out why we don't have it in this city, <laughs> is that it, it, would, it would be used in copious amounts by people 
bathing themselves in the restroom. It was really hard to keep up with it, and it was a bit of a cost. But let me figure out why we don't have it here. There could be, you know, dispensers that make it difficult to, you know, I don't right. know. But, right. I mean, none. I hey, know. no. You want to wash your hands, yes. I, I want to wash my hands, but, you know. I'll, I'll talk to Joe, and we'll brainstorm about it. Okay, we are ready to do uh, VCB. Thanks, Jeannie. I'd pay, pay a nickel. Yeah. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if it costs. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no hands out there. Soap. Okay. All right. The VCB budget is on page 51 of the budget. Um, I'm going to, before we get into the budget, there's been quite a few changes, quite a few um, opportunities that we've present, that have come our way, uh, some wonderful projects that have been done. So I'm going to let Ed begin uh, just talking a little general overview of the VCB, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Wow. 28 minutes. Ten minutes. The break. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, uh, there, there's a lot of changes uh, with the VCB, and a lot of it is reflecting the changes we're seeing in how people communicate. Um, I hate to admit it, that about, I don't know, 90% of everything I've ever learned over my entire career is obsolete now. I mean, the, the way I used to do business, and I, I long for the days when people watch commercials because they change the channel, they have to walk across the room and click <laughs> the dial, and there are only three channels anyway, so why bother? You know, those, uh, <laughs> those days are long over. We're, we're in an era now where we really need to learn how to create our own content. And uh, you'll see things in here like the budget for the Culinary Center going down by $10,000. Um, part of that is being driven by the fact that we're repurposing the Culinary Center. The uh, show stage is being used as a little TV studio. Um, rather than talk to people uh, 12 at a time for a, a, a cooking class or 24 at a time for a demo, uh, we're doing things like uh, taking a video crew out to a restaurant filming on location for a little bit, having them go back to the Culinary Center and share one of their secret recipes with people. Uh, it's going to be a show called Beachside Bites. Uh, we've got the first eight of them in the can already. Uh, we'll be shooting four more at the end of this month. Uh, the first batch of shows are almost done in edit right now. And you're going to see more and more things like that. Um, we hired uh, Cassie Root to uh, come in and be part of the, uh, the VCB team because we really need to be able to generate content. A lot of what she's going to be doing is a lot of what she did with the uh, NewsGuard, minus the ambulances and police cars and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to feed the website. We need to learn how to do video. We need to um, create the things that excite people about Lincoln City. We're about to release a, a new major video project done by Cody Chaw, and we'll, we'll have a, a TV night at the Bijou to uh, do a big uh, launch of that program, too. But a lot of the things you're seeing in this budget are shifts. Net-net, my budget actually from last year to this year went down by 7.6%. Okay, we're spending less money overall. But within that budget, you're going to see shifts all over the place. Um, for example, if you look at uh, contracted services, uh, 620-1119, that's up $114,000. Um, but if you look at uh, 620-5002, that's down by 105 eight. Um, that's advertising money being reallocated up in the contract services, and that's primarily being done so we can generate content and feed it back out to folks to tell them what a wonderful city we have. Um, it's, it's that type of thing that you're going to see in the budget. I mean, Ron, does that cover it? Okay, any questions? <laughs> Last time <laughs> <that covered it. laughs> We do expect all of you to be at the... Uh, the Bijou Theater when we show it. I've got the preview of this. Uh, it's going to be an awful lot of fun. So, 
I'm sorry, did we have a date on that? Um, I'm waiting for the final edit for one of the beachside bike shows to be done. Okay. So it should be within the next couple of weeks, and we'll make sure everybody knows about that. Um, and Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, Rose Festival. Yeah. Where, where am I finding that? In Rose Festival is now being done by the parks this year. Oh, and, and, and paid that. for okay. by the VCB. And paid for by the okay. VCB. Okay. But, uh, yeah, we we're, have two uh, genies. providing the, the money to uh, redo the float and everything, but uh, that's in Genie's department this year, and Boone Marker is leading the charge on that. But visitors, convention bureau is paying for it. Right. Where do I find that? Where do I find that transfer? Um, I'm probably going to have to get back to you on that. It's in one of these lines here somewhere. <laughs> And it's not a transfer. It's it's me dealing directly with the vendors. We're we're paying the uh, uh, the registration fee. Uh, we'll be paying for materials, and and it's not going to be anywhere near as much money as we paid last year. Because last year we we bought the golf cart. We had the maintenance department do the steel structure that the right. frame attached to. We paid for all the lumber to make the platform. Uh, what changes this year is where we had our little purple whale right. and that comes off a sandcastle replaces it and there's some other props and pieces so I think it's a grand total of three thousand bucks thirty five hundred dollars something like that it's not a huge amount of money because all the heavy lifting was done last year mr. chair I apologize I, I can't remember which line item that is thanks uh, mr. chair um, I don't know which one of you to ask um, perhaps Ron but I'm just, this is a question, it does, because it's coming out of your budget, I guess it's not budget related with it. I just want to know, is this a rotating management opportunity for all senior staff or less, you know, if it's moving from from Ed to Jeannie next year, is it going to be so, Debbie? Could um, be. <laughs> Could be. Nope. <laughs> um, this, this last year, um, the, the big discussion that we had at our staff was who wants to do the Rose Parade? And Ed said, I'll pay for it, but uh, <laughs> someone else will do it. And Jeannie was the new kid on the block, and <laughs> so they volunteered her. And, uh, but uh, it's actually being assigned to Boone Marker. And uh, one of the reasons we did ask Boone to do that is because of his extensive contacts that he has both through the Kiwanis Club and also through all of the volunteers that he works with in the recreation program. And so he, he, had the, he had the reach that we felt we would need for the volunteers to help in, the, in putting together. Last year, I thought, the, I thought the, uh, the parade was terrific and it was really done well. If I was gonna do anything different, it would be a little less heavy on staff time, staff volunteers and more on city volunteers. And so that's what Boone is bringing to the project. Thanks. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Ed, can you remind me where we're paying fireworks out of now? Yeah, fireworks. Since it shows zero on fireworks. <laughs> yeah, that now resides. It has its own line item now. And that's uh, 6201120. And last year we were budgeted $24,000 for fireworks. <coughs> that has gone up to $37,000. Uh, we've added a lot more fireworks for the grand finale. Uh, we have more professional staging. We've improved the bands. Pardon? That's zero. Yeah. No, page are you on? That's, that's the old line item. What? What line item? What page and what yeah. line item? Six two zero one one two zero is what you said. Ed? And contracted, contracted services, services events. One, one, two, the ninety-seven thousand five hundred dollars. It's in there. Okay. Okay. And the the, the other thing uh, we're trying this year, and this is a partnership with the uh, uh, Parks and Rec Department. Um, we want to eventually get Fourth of July to where it's a full-blown festival. And right now we're attracting a ton of people and we have a great fireworks show and we've got music. What's missing uh, are vendors, you know, where you can get cotton candy and popcorn and uh, dipping dots and whatnot. Jeannie's folks have been working to, to, to see what we can get in terms of vendors this year. It won't be a big operation, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna learn how to do it. 
Has any of that been offered locally? Or are we just going for yeah. the national? Because I haven't seen anything that says, hey, if you've got a restaurant here in town, would you like to vend? And um, Boone's been helping with that. Uh, Jeannie's been involved. And Jeannie, you Uh, from from what I understand, and Jeannie will correct me when she gets up here, is that uh, there's a, an email list that's been developed through the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, and I would love more vendor contacts. So if you have any, if you could send them my way, um, I'm not getting a huge response for the forest right now, and I uh, being new here need to get more contacts coming my way. I'm going off of existing contact lists right now that were used for Pixie Fest last year and other events. Sure. And no, not seems everybody's in chamber either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Miss a lot of. Yeah. That'd be so something that. I'm just doing emails right now and returning phone calls to people who are. Who in are the asking. tap culinary program, they're not interested in. We can send that out, right? I mean. Yeah. yeah. You want to send it to council? Well, that'd be sure. great. Sure. Send it. Send it to council. Yeah. And say, hey, if you know somebody. Yeah. Great. I'll send you that. I Thank put, you. I could put a couple together. Um, and a quick question, Ed, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's addressed here or if it's a question for another day and you stop me if it's a waste of your time. I, I know we spend a lot of money looking for the overnighters and the day trippers in the valley and the indiv individual visitors. How much do we devote and is there something in the budget to, um, uh, how would I write it down, uh, groups, um, special interest groups? Uh, I remember we had the police. Uh, Department hosting the uh, DUI, DUI uh, training, and do we do we go out to find those? Uh, yeah, we. Uh, to be blunt with you, we haven't done a very good job at that, mm -hmm. and I have no dedicated staff for that. Um, our plan this year, and there's a, a little bit of money in the budget, and there's other monies we can bring to bear if if there's interest. Um, I want to put out a call and say that I go to X amount of trade shows uh, in an attempt to get group business. Uh, there's a lot, of, lot more that we should go to. So what I want to do is to establish a cooperative fund where I put in money. Uh, I already have a handshake agreement with the casino where they will match whatever we put in. And then open it up to other partners in town for lesser amounts. So. Uh, the line item in the budget right now that's specifically for that co-op fund is only $3,000. Well, right now, I can turn that into at least six, probably ten. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the budget for the trade shows, I can pop that up a little bit more and convert a lot of what we're doing into cooperative efforts. My goal is to involve the lodging community, uh, involve the folks that have event spaces, and uh, make sure everybody has skin in the game. Uh, talking to folks in my department that were around well before I came here, um, apparently the, the, the VCB used to go and buy slots in trade shows and then ask hotels and whatnot if they would come in and, um, you know, participate and contribute staffing and whatnot. And we evidently had quite a few where nobody showed up at the VCB. Mm -hmm. um, if you got money in it, you're not going to do that. You know, if, if you paid money to be there, it's of value to you. You're going to have the staff and support and put things behind it. So what I want to do on the group end, uh, rather than have a group salesperson who goes up to Portland and bangs on door at associations and whatnot, um, I want to sit down, and, and we talked about it last night. We had a, a hotel association meeting uh, up at Surf Tides. Uh, we want to get interested lodging properties together and any other ancillary properties in town that are interested and hammer out a deal where we're working together to bring groups into town. We're leveraging all of our resources. Well, one of my big frustrations last year was when I went to the NTA convention. I mean, that thing cost a bloody fortune. NTA. Uh, the, 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 but the National Bus Tour uh, Convention. Um, I go there and I'm sitting next to the uh, sales rep from uh, Surf Tides and it's like we both paid to come here? She goes, yep, yes so. That was stupid. Wow. We should have paid for it once, shared it, and then used the money left over to go to another two, three shows up in Portland, done the bridal show or, you know, whatever. So um, one of the tasks this year, and there's some seed money in here to make it happen, and I will rearrange a little bit if it turns out to be a big success 
is to uh, form that cooperative group and hopefully hit four times as many shows that I could do as just the VCB with the help of other folks in town. And we briefly talked about, um, I, I think we need to change the name from convention bureau to conference. Uh, I, we don't have convention space unless we want to build something and I think it reflects better our mission yep. that we're trying to attract conferences, but that's for another. That, that's, yeah, that's a whole other discussion. Thank you. Any other questions? That concludes what I had hoped to get through tonight, so thank you and congratulations. But one moment, please. Yes. Mr. Chair, sure. uh, page 51 at the top, transient room tax dash 08 BM. There's two transient tax lines. And if you recall, the transient room tax has two sections to it. There's an 8% and then there's additional percent and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to separate those out. They've just oh. now been combined into one. Okay. As far as showing it as a revenue. Thank you. And the culinary center, Ed, what, how, how are we doing with the subsidy for the culinary center? The culinary center right now is running pretty much at break even. It is. Good job. Is. Oh, good. Um, we, we've drastically cut the, uh, the amount of money we've been spending on uh, supplies. We're actually doing fewer classes, but that's by design. And we've zeroed out the guest chef budget. We are not paying for guest chefs anymore, period. That's at the end. That, that in itself was $4,000. So uh, we're, we're, we're at the break-even point we hope to be. And uh, the, the trick now is to repurpose. Uh, we're working with the community college. They're using that as lab space to, be, to do hospitality training. Uh, we're working with Career Tech, where they're teaching kids uh, cooking skills using the industrial kitchen there at the culinary center and we're working with allied video uh, out of uh, Salem to use that show stage and that facility and that setting uh, as a place to film uh, TV shows that promote local uh, Lincoln City restaurants and and the key there is the, the pitch used to be come to Lincoln City and attend a class and learn how to cook by our master chef that's not what we're saying anymore. <coughs> um, with the TV show, Donna, at best, is a sous chef or an assistant or a continuity element. The star of the show is the restaurant. And the show starts at the restaurant. Donna's in an assist mode, but the star of the show is that chef. And the idea is we want to see if we can bring uh, a, a degree of celebrity to the people that make the food scene happen in town, and also a, a degree of awareness of the, uh, the restaurants we have and, and the type of places we have to eat. I'm hoping for a problem with it, and the problem I'm hoping for is every restaurant in town going, that's not fair, why didn't you have me in there, when's my turn? As soon as I hear that, I know, I know we'll have a success. <laughs> so it's... Um, and you haven't heard that yet? Actually, I have. Actually, I have from two have. properties, and we haven't even aired anything yet. So, yeah, it's uh, the signs are good so far. But, but if you if you look at what we're trying to do with the culinary center, um, I don't want to run it as a break-even restaurant. I mean, who cares? And I don't want to touch twelve or twenty-four people at a time. Who cares? What I want to do is to convince everybody out there that we have a, a wonderful, vibrant food scene and use the culinary center as a means to demonstrate that. Um, we're, we're, the old cook-offs that we had, uh, the chowder cook-off and the fish taco cook-off and the jambalaya, those are dead. We took them behind the barn and killed them with an ax. Um, we're about to replace those, and this will be a test run uh, with a, uh, it's not gonna be a cook-off, it's gonna be a restaurant showcase around an ingredient or an item, and that's gonna kick off restaurant week in Lincoln City. Uh, Donna's working um, with some restaurants uh, and what we're hearing is everybody wants something that's relatively affordable and easy and whatnot. We're going to try it in December when we really need the business and it's going to be a uh, mac and cheese showcase up there where it's, yeah, mac and cheese and Tillamook cheese and all that stuff. 
but you know, with things added in it to make it wonderful. And then for the week after that in Lincoln City, that's gonna be featured in all the restaurants that participate to, to see if we can drive business using the Culinary Center into our restaurants. I think it's the, the direction that we're really going in this is that, uh, is that the, the VCB is, has become and will continue to become the marketing arm of the city. And uh, it actually fits quite well with the whole branding campaign that we did where we know people come here for the beach, but when they come, they discover uh, the unexpected. And so everything that Ed's been doing this and with the revamping of the Culinary Center is that come here for the beach, but you are going to discover something that is unexpected, wonderful restaurants uh, and things like that. So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make this my last question. Um, speaking of the transition, uh, logo expenses and, and uh, application of those. Most of those we're trying to get done over the next couple of months. There may be some, uh, there may be a few that we need to carry forward, but a lot of the expenses were, uh, were uh, we had a budget for this month so, or for this year, so we're trying to, to, to get those done. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. On page 53, Ed, um, building improvements, we've got nothing budgeted, and ADA improvements, we've got nothing budgeted. Uh, that's, that's correct for now. And um, the, are you asking about the possibility of the visitor center at D River? Or no, just no, I'm, 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 I'm assuming that we, you pay a, a piece of the building improvements of this building. Uh, it, that comes through the transfer into the Lincoln Square Fund. Okay. Uh, the, what you've seen in the past under that building fund has been for things like uh, the uh, Jennifer Sears Studio, when that used to be operated under BCB, that's now uh, uh, operated under economic development. So it's shifted in the budget. And how about the ADA improvements? That would be the same thing. They were for those kind of improvements. And how about building maintenance on page 52, second from the bottom? There were some one-time projects budgeted for this year for the VCB, such as a conference remodel, and maybe elaborate on that. Yeah, we, we had a storage room that's upstairs, and that has been remodeled along with a couple of other things, and so that was the one-time expense for this year. Okay, but thank you. That's the we have the twenty thousand for the office mm -hmm. furniture that you you had talked about last year, I think, right. and then the five thousand for the vehicle purchase. 5000 for a vehicle well, uh, or other vehicle? We wanted to buy a vehicle. It just took <laughs> over everybody <laughs> else's. Yeah, um, about bottom a fifth line, of my, vehicle? my staff's been tying up a lot of city vehicles, and we heard from the third floor, it would really be nice if you bought your own vehicle. So <laughs> we, we built it into the budget until it got to Ron, <laughs> and uh, Ron said, I don't think so. And we discussed what the issue was. The issue was that you know, let's say Scott or Eric goes off to a uh, conference. Well, the little Ford Escort or the transit van goes up to Portland and sits at the airport for a week and nobody else can use it. Uh, and then we talked to Ron about that and Ron's like, why are they taking the transit van to Portland? It's because the city manager told me he doesn't want to see a lot of mileage charges. He said, that doesn't make any sense. Mileage, a little bit of mileage is cheaper than a new vehicle. So you'll see a slight increase in our mileage reimbursement and no new vehicle. Does that, does that cover it, Ron? It covers it. Well, you got, you got the float, right? That vehicle? You can drive the, the golf cart? Yeah, that's golf cart. Right. That's Jeannie's headache this year. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new wreck vehicle. <laughs> So the money for the, sorry, the money for the, the bathrooms or the remodel at the way is. Yeah, if, if you've ever been up to the VCB, it's like a step above cubicles. Our, our walls don't go to the ceiling. There's no real privacy. We have a room with a table, but it's a work room. Um, we just felt like we needed some professional space, and we also needed some space to be private when we needed something like that. Um, we have a great staff, wonderful people, rarely any problems, but if there is like an HR type of discussion that needs to be had, there is no place up there to do that. This gives us that. Also, if we're trying to get you know, a sponsor or a vendor or a partner or whatever, um, 
you know, it's not good to bring them in a room with a bunch of cardboard boxes and paper cutters and whatnot and try to convince them that they're working with somebody professional. We just needed that small conference room professional space for a number of reasons. So that's that's what that was all about. Mr. Chair. And the money for the D Sands or the D Wayside remodel. That is the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's in an unappropriated fund balance. Again, we're not anticipating doing that this year. We just wanted to make sure that uh, that money didn't get gobbled up for something else, and that's why it's in the unappropriated fund balance because you can't touch that unless there's an emergency. No, I don't anticipate that will happen. I don't anticipate that that we may get as far as start putting together designs and some engineering and things like that, but as far as construction, no, I don't anticipate that before the next fiscal year. Ron, is that the 8.1 mil, the rainy day fund? No, it's oh, out of the way. it's out of the 1.6 mil oh. in the uh, VCB fund. VCB. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Is your total rain? What's your total rainy day fund? The total rainy day fund. Well, it's six million in the general fund. It's roughly around six hundred thousand dollars in the rest of the funds. And seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in the VCB funds, in the rest of the operational funds. What about the reserve for future year funds? We it's added up four million three hundred thirty-seven thousand in six three seven zero four zero zero. There's three hundred twenty-two thousand in six three seven zero four zero zero, an additional capital reserve of five hundred two thousand. So that's another almost six million that are in the reserve for future years. I'll let you answer that. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same money, isn't it? Uh, that's a reserve for future years. <laughs> um, it's different than the rainy day fund. So the, I'm just trying to get the, D, the answer to these questions. So it really looks like there's about 13. It, I guess it depends on what you mean by rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of these are some of the monies, for example, are in the SDC funds. Those have very very tight restrictions on what you can use them for. So is it a rate? Well, is it a rainy day fund? Well, it depends on if, if the rainy day item is on the capital list. I, I'm going to explain that just a little bit different. The reserve for capital year for reserve for future capital is for capital projects. The rainy day funds that you're seeing that eight million dollars that is operational uh, budgets. And those are, if, for example, if we had a downturn in the economy, uh, it's so that uh, we have some funds in there that can take us through it. So it's the difference between capital and operational. That's a much better explanation. <laughs> so on the expense code list that you produced, the, what you're referring to as the rainy day fund would be the contingencies? Contingency contingencies. and unappropriated fund balance. Gotcha. So we still have to hold the public hearing. And we still have to schedule. Do we have to schedule the next meeting? No, it's already scheduled. Yeah, it's scheduled for the twenty-first. And you only have to hold a meeting if you wish to. It's not required. What? And yeah, if there's, well, nobody there's nobody here, nobody then. Here. Yeah. Uh, so the intent for the next meeting will be to deal with to finish the final funds, which should go relatively quickly. They're the smaller ones. Uh, then the biggest part is to be will be to go through the proposed amendments. And then to vote on the final budget. Wonderful. We're still at 6 p.m. Thank you, staff. Yes, sir. And millage thank rate. you, budget committee. And the millage rate. We are adjourned. Eighteen million dollars. That was a much better explanation.